Welcome to the Fantasy Audiobook. Marvel's Thanos' little brother and I have super god villain system. Chapter 1. Thanos, what are you doing? Are you really going to destroy your planet? You are absolutely crazy. You are a complete lunatic. Death has deceived you, and you will not get what you want. He opened his eyes in a daze, and bursts of shouting and cursing mixed with explosions rang in Sook's ears, making him a little more awake. However, the scene that appeared in front of him immediately shocked him. Countless corpses piled up in front of him, blood covered the entire land, and wailing was everywhere. Not far away, a tall figure in armor was walking towards him step by step. The face that looked like a purple potato made Sook recognize his identity at once. Thanos. That is Thanos, the strongest villain in the Marvel Universe. Behind Thanos, there is a floating skeleton hidden under a black cloak. This is the goddess of death. Shit, what the hell is going on? Is this a dream? Su Ke was a little confused and had no idea what was going on. But then, a strong arm pulled him up, and before he could react, he was forcibly stuffed into a lifeboat. Child, live on and never come back. After saying this, in Su Ke's confused eyes, the lifeboat slowly rose up, and then turned into a white light and disappeared into the depths of the universe. At the moment when Su Ke escaped, the planet he was on suddenly shattered, and then turned into a burst of light and completely disappeared in the universe. In the void, after reaping all the lives, the goddess of death looked at Thanos with deep affection and said, My dear, you hesitated just now. He couldn't escape. Is it because he is your brother? No. Thanos shook his head and said, He can't escape, and no life in this universe can escape. All this is just the beginning. Dear, I believe you. Another charming call, the goddess of death wrapped her arms around Thanos' neck, and then they began to kiss passionately. On the other side, after finally receiving the memories of this body, Suke felt a pain in his balls, because he finally understood that he had not only traveled to the Marvel world, but also traveled to become Thanos' only brother, and even almost died again. What the hell, Suke just wanted to curse at this moment. Please set the destination. Suddenly, at this moment, a voice rang out from the lifeboat. Suk came back to his senses instantly. He knew that he was still floating in the universe and had to find a place quickly. It was not a good idea to keep floating like this. Set the destination to Earth. Su Ke said, as a native Chinese on Earth, even if he was reborn as an eternal member, Su Ke still had an infinite yearning for Earth in his heart. Besides, his previous planet had been destroyed by his brother Thanos, so he couldn't go back even if he wanted to. The destination has been set successfully. The destination is about 30 light years away. Please enter the sleeping cabin. As the sound of the lifeboat sounded, the interior of the lifeboat suddenly changed. The seat where I sat before was transformed into something similar to a sleeping cabin. The distance of 30 light years would take at least a dozen years to fly. Waiting is really not a solution. It is just right to take advantage of this time to digest all the knowledge about the Eternal Clan. Thinking of this, Su Ke lay down without hesitation. Soon, he closed his eyes, and his consciousness began to immerse himself in the incomparable knowledge in his mind. I don't know how long it took. Xavier School for Gifted Youngsters in Westchester, New York, USA, is a school specially set up for mutants. The founder of this school is the famous Professor X, a mutant with powerful telepathy. On this day, Professor X was looking through documents at his desk as usual. Suddenly, his door was pushed open, and a guy with blue hair like a beast rushed in. Hank, what happened? Why are you so panicked? Professor X looked up and asked with a puzzled look on his face. At this moment, Hank was so excited that he couldn't speak clearly. He just stretched out a hand and pointed to the roof. Ha, huh, Professor X frowned even deeper. Just as he was about to read Hank's thoughts directly, he heard aloud, boom, and the entire ceiling suddenly exploded, and then a lifeboat fell down. At this moment, Professor X was completely stunned. This day is definitely the most unforgettable day for the mutant school. Even though Professor X thinks he has seen a lot of things and nothing in the world can arouse his curiosity, today, his curiosity is no less than that of others. Not for anything else, but because an alien actually fell here today. Nick Fury, no matter what you say I will not hand him over to you, he's just a kid, not a threat. Tony, I know what you want to do, but it's impossible. 
I won't let you do anything to him. Mr. President, I can assure you that this child will not cause any harm to the world, please rest assured. Less than half a day after Sook fell, Professor X was extremely busy, with calls from all over the world coming one after another, such as Nick Fury, director of S.H.I.E.L.D., Tony Stark, Iron Man, and even the current president of the United States. They called for only one purpose, which was to hope that Professor X would hand over Sook to them for research, because in their opinion, Sook from outer space was a very dangerous existence. But of course, Professor X didn't think so. In his eyes, Su K was just a child, and a child shouldn't be treated like that. Pinching his forehead with a headache, Professor X smiled helplessly at Wolverine, Hank, and Mystique in front of him, the arrival of this little guy really caused a lot of trouble. Everyone wants to get him. This is also reasonable. Hank, who has turned into a human form, raised his eyes and said, based on the various tests we have done on him before, we have reason to believe that he is not a simple alien. What's going on? Professor X became more interested. Hank continued, his skin is very tough and almost indestructible. Things like lasers can't cause any harm to him. Logan's Amanda Metal can cause some minor damage to him for a short time, but it only takes a moment before the damage will heal. To put it simply, his body is indestructible, and his self-healing ability is stronger than Logan's. Humph. Wolverine on the side snorted coldly when he heard this, but he couldn't refute it because he had really tried it just now and it was indeed the case. Also, at the beginning, Professor, you tried to invade his consciousness to wake him up, but failed. At first we thought it was because he had no consciousness, but later we found out that this was not the case. The reason for this was that his mental ability was so strong that it completely resisted your invasion of consciousness. In addition, based on his muscle density, we speculate that he should have super strength, super hearing, super speed, and his special body structure can even allow him to absorb certain forces. He may also be able to fly. At this point, Hank couldn't say anything more, and Professor X was completely shocked. Although he knew from the beginning that this child from the universe must be extraordinary, he didn't expect that he had so many abilities. No matter which of these abilities you possess, you will become a powerful being. When all these abilities are concentrated in one person, it is simply too terrifying. Just as Professor X was looking shocked, on the other side, in the medical room of the mutant school, Su K was still sleeping on the bed. But of course, this is just a superficial phenomenon. Brother, when are you going to let me out? In his deepest consciousness, Su K shouted with despair. Ding, host, please don't be anxious. According to calculations, the host will wake up soon. Not anxious, I have been trapped here by you for 100,000 years. How can I not be anxious? Su K couldn't help cursing in his heart. To put it simply, the person who is talking to Su K now is not someone else but the golden finger system that is essential for traversers, and this system is very powerful, called the super god villain system. To put it simply, this is a system that can help Su K become a super villain. And this system was triggered and bound in his consciousness after Su K fell into a deep sleep. As an awesome system, there must be something like a novice gift package when it is just bound, and Su K also has it, but this novice gift package is a bit too pitfall. He actually rewarded Su K with 100,000 years of time. This should have been a good thing. After all, who would not want to live an extra 100,000 years? But unexpectedly, these 100,000 years were actually sleeping time, and before he confirmed, the system gave these 100,000 years to Su K. After coming to Earth from Saturn, although Sook's body was dormant for less than 10 years, his consciousness was dormant for a full 100,000 years and 10 years. No wonder Sook cursed. But this is not completely without benefits. During this period of sleep, Sook, like Thanos, knew all the superhuman philosophies of the Eternals, which gave him unsurpassed strength, endurance, recovery ability and agility. His skin is almost indestructible, and even if it is destroyed, it can be quickly repaired. Because of the powerful mental power, even if his body is completely destroyed, he can recast an identical body for himself through thoughts. Even according to the system's explanation, Sook realized that his abilities are far more than that. These hundred thousand years were truly worth it. Hello, my friend from the universe, my name is Jean Grey, would you like to be my friend? Suddenly, at this moment, a voice sounded in Sook's consciousness. Sook was delighted, 
he was finally going to wake up. Slowly opening his eyes, Su Ke smelled the smell of disinfectant. Then he looked around and found that his guess was correct. He was indeed lying in a place that looked like a hospital. The familiar English letters and the panicked people clearly explained where this place was. This is Earth. This. This is Earth. I'm finally here. After seeing where he was, Su Ke was so happy that he was about to get up, regardless of the medical staff who wanted to dissuade him from lying down. Before his feet even touched the ground, his body floated up. I rely on. I can actually fly. Su Ke laughed. You know, even his brother Thanos doesn't have the power to fly. Wait, the voice that woke me up just now was Jean Grey. Phoenix, isn't this a character from the X-Men? Am I in a mutant school now? Thinking back to the voice he heard before, Suk felt confused again. Looking around, Suk saw a lot of children lying densely outside a glass wall not far from him. The oldest of them looked to be about 20 years old, and the youngest looked only 4 or 5 years old. They were looking at him with shock on their faces. Among them, there was a very special girl. She was about 15 or 16 years old, with long fiery red hair and was very beautiful. She was lying alone in a corner, looking over here. For some reason, the other children didn't seem to want to get too close to her. Jean Grey, looking at the girl, Suk couldn't help but called out her name. In an instant, Jean Grey also noticed Suk's gaze, and knew that Suk called out her name. She panicked and ran out quickly. At this time, Professor X, and others who got the news also rushed over. The moment he saw Suk, Hank couldn't help but shouted, Did you see it? I said this guy can fly. Okay, okay, Hank, let the kids leave here, he just woke up and needs quiet. Professor X, shouted. Soon, all the children who were watching were taken away. After taking a shower and changing into a set of clean clothes, Suk followed Professor X to an office where Hank, Mystique and Wolverine had been waiting for a long time. Child, if you think now is not the right time, we will not force you, we can wait forever. Professor X asked again before starting the conversation. In his opinion, Suk is an alien. It is his first time coming to Earth. He must have many things he is not used to and needs a lot of time to adapt. But after hearing this, Suk shook his head and said, No need, Professor, I think now is the time. As an alien coming to Earth, Suk knew that a conversation was inevitable. This kind of thing should be done sooner and later. Besides, a conversation is better than being tied to a table for dissection, right? Suk insisted so much that Professor X was not polite. Then he asked, Child, what is your name? Where are you from? My name is Suk and I come from the Eternal Clan on Saturn's satellite Titan. Suk replied, Why did you come to Earth? Are you here to invade Earth? And why do you speak our language? Have you been studying us for a long time? Hank asked like a curious baby. This guy, asking so many questions at once. After muttering in his heart, Suk finally replied, I came to the Earth not to invade, but just to escape. My planet was destroyed, and I was the only one who escaped. Also, I don't only speak your language, I understand all the knowledge and languages in the universe, and your language is just one of millions. Wow, Hank was stunned and completely speechless. You said before that your planet was destroyed. I'm curious about who did it. Wolverine asked. It wasn't someone else. Sook shook his head and pretended to be a little sad and said, The one who destroyed my planet was my dear brother Thanos, he is a powerful cosmic tyrant. Boy, it seems we still have something in common, we both have a jerk brother, but of course, my brother never thought of destroying the earth. Wolverine said with a smile, and it was obvious that Sook's words reminded Wolverine of his brother Sabretooth, an equally powerful mutant. Well, let's stop here for today's conversation. Sook, on behalf of the earth, I welcome you. You can treat this place as your home. As long as you want, you can live here forever. Hank, Sook is in your hands. Seeing that Suk was a little sad, Professor X ended the conversation immediately. Come on, Suk, I'll show you around here, I believe you'll like it here. With a slight smile, Hank took Suk away. Suk A, look, this is our classroom. This is where you live, and you will live here too. This is the playground. School is over now, so there are many people here. After walking around the mutant school, Hank introduced everything patiently and excitedly. 
It was obvious that he welcomed Sook's arrival. Hello you. Your name is Sook, right? Just as he reached the lake, a soft female voice rang in Sook's mind again, and Sook could not help but stop. It was Jean Grey. What's wrong, Sook? Seeing Sook suddenly stop, Hank asked in confusion. Nothing. Sue K smiled and said, Teacher Hank, can I be alone for a while? I need to digest everything you just said. Of course, I'll go back first, remember to come find me later. Hank said with a smile, then turned and left. After Hank's figure disappeared, Sue looked towards a big tree not far away. Behind the tree, a pair of big eyes were looking at him nervously. Sook felt amused in his heart, and walked to the big tree before saying, Hello, Jean Grey, my name is Sook, nice to meet you. You, do you know my name? As if she knew she couldn't hide anymore, Jean Grey slowly came out, looking like a shy little girl. Didn't you introduce yourself to me when I was asleep before? And I want to thank you, because it was your introduction that woke me up. Su K said in a friendly manner, but he was quite shocked in his heart. You have to know that this is Jean Grey, the famous Phoenix girl in the X-Men, one of the few Omega Mutants, who possesses the bug-level Phoenix Force. In the X-Men series of stories, there are many big guys who were killed instantly by Jean Grey with the Phoenix Force, such as Apocalypse, Professor X, Magneto and the like, who are all scum in front of her. But of course, this is after Jean Grey learned to use the Phoenix Force. At the moment, she is just a mutant child with telepathic abilities. Wait, Jean Grey is a telepathic mutant. Doesn't that mean she can sense all my thoughts? In front of her, I have no secrets at all. Professor X cannot sense his thoughts. Sook knows that, but Jean Grey is different from Professor X. She is the owner of the Phoenix Force, and her ability is much stronger than Professor X. Could it be that she already knew her identity as a time traveler? Or even knew about the existence of the system? Sue K felt a pain in his heart, and could only continue to ask, have you been reading my thoughts and ideas all the time? Ha, huh, no, no. When Sue K asked this, Jean Grey was obviously a little panicked, and then hurriedly explained, I have never wanted to read your thoughts and ideas, and I can't do it because your mental ability is too strong, and it even hinders my telepathy. I can't read anyone's thoughts around you, and I didn't even know you could hear my voice before. I should thank you, because of you, I can no longer hear those messy voices. Really, hearing this, Su K was completely relieved. His secret was finally safe. At the same time, he also understood that Jean Grey seemed to really hate her ability. Because she couldn't control it, her mind was always filled with the voices and thoughts of the people around her, which almost made her collapse. What a poor child. Sook shook his head, reached out his hand and gently stroked Jean Grey's hair to comfort him. At this moment, he seemed to have forgotten that he was just a 16-year-old child. But what Su K didn't expect was that such a simple act actually moved Jean Grey so much that she almost cried. Su K was a little embarrassed because the scene was so easy to be misunderstood. Then, as if she realized that the two were too close, Jean Grey quickly took two steps back and said nervously, Don't. Don't get too close to me, I. I might do something terrible. I am a monster. Su K knew that the monster that Jean Grey was talking about was the Phoenix Force in her body. If the Phoenix Force erupted, it would indeed be no different from a monster. But then again, Jean Grey's power was still very weak at this time, and Professor X could still help her completely control it. After all, if the Phoenix Force really erupted so easily, how could Professor X dare to let her live here? Thinking of this, Su K laughed and said, What's wrong with a monster? I'm still an alien. In the eyes of humans and mutants, aliens are the real monsters, right? You are not alone, because you have an alien monster friend like me. Friend, are you willing to be my friend? Jean Grey said with some surprise. Of course, Sook stretched out his hand and said with a smile. In the office not far away, Professor X was watching all this with a smile on his face. Jean Grey has always been a problem girl in school. Because of the fear of her own power, she is very afraid to get close to anyone. Unexpectedly, the new alien Sook actually helped her overcome her fear. The next second, Professor X suddenly seemed to think of something, and his face became ugly again, because he knew in his heart that Nick Fury, the director of S.H.I.E.L.D., and Tony Stark, the Iron Man, were not so easy to deal with. 
These two guys will definitely make trouble for Sook. As night fell, when everyone was asleep, Sook couldn't fall asleep. One reason was that he had slept too long before and didn't feel sleepy at all. The other reason was that he was sorting out all the information about this world in his mind. First of all, it was certain that the timeline of this world seemed to be different from what he had known before. The mutant school he was currently in was rebuilt after Magneto's rampage in Washington. Sook knew that this should be the timeline after the reversal of the future, which was only a year ago. According to the settings in the comics and movies, this would only happen in 1975, but now it was 2010, which was more than 30 years different from the timeline he knew. If these were just differences, then the next thing would be a bit tricky. In the list of founders of the mutant school, Sook suddenly found a name that was enough to make him feel extremely annoyed. Bruce Wayne. This is Batman in the DC universe. At first, Sook thought he had made a mistake, thinking that these were just two people with the same name but no connection, but after asking Hank, he found out that this was actually true. One of the founders of this school is actually Bruce Wayne, a billionaire from Gotham City. According to Hank's introduction, Sook knew that Hank didn't know Bruce Wayne's true identity, but it was obvious that Professor X must know it. If Batman really exists in this world, then obviously Superman, Wonder Woman, Martian Manhunter, Flash, Shazam, and other guys must also exist. This is enough to show that the world he is in now is the world after the fusion of the Marvel and DC worlds. The Marvel world is originally a dangerous world, and the 600th world is the same. Being in the new world after the fusion of these two worlds, Suke simply has the urge to curse. And according to the current situation, Thanos will eventually come to the Earth to find the infinite gems on the Earth. At that time, with a snap of his fingers, half of the entire universe will be dead. Suke is not afraid of Thanos. With his current strength, he is enough to fight Thanos on equal terms. But don't forget that there is a goddess of death behind Thanos. This guy is the creator god, immortal and indestructible. How can he fight? The timeline is completely messed up. Su Ke doesn't know what will happen next. He only knows that Thanos will eventually come to the earth to find the infinite gems. Similarly, Thanos will come to him. In addition to Thanos, Darkseid in the DC universe is also an awesome existence, plus a doomsday who can't be killed no matter what he does. The earth is really dangerous. Fortunately, the Avengers and the Justice League should also exist, and powerful fighters such as the Hulk, Thor, Superman and Wonder Woman are also there. This gives Su Ke a little comfort. After all, he has finally come to the Earth, and he doesn't want the Earth to be destroyed. Although he already has powerful power, Su Ke does not think he is invincible. After all, there are too many strong people in this world. If he wants to live well in this world, he needs stronger power. Hey, system, aren't you a god-level villain system? Do you have any way to make me stronger? Su Ke finally set his sights on the system. Ding. Sensing the host's eagerness to gain power, the first mission is now issued to obtain a certain amount of mysterious power. Mission reward. 10,000 villain points and a chance to draw a lottery. Su Ke was completely speechless. If the system had a physical body, he would definitely beat him up. I'm asking you how to become stronger, what the hell is your mission? As if it had sensed Su Ke's thoughts, the system said, it senses a large amount of mysterious power within a radius of one kilometer from the host. Please complete the mission as soon as possible. What, isn't it such a coincidence? Su Ke was shocked at first, and then he almost laughed. He didn't expect that the mission issued by the system would be so simple. Okay, I'll take this mission. Su Ke agreed with a smile and got up from the bed. He couldn't sleep at this moment anyway, so he wanted to see what the mysterious power the system was talking about. He walked out of the room quietly, and following the coordinates given by the system in his mind, Su Ke easily found the so-called mysterious substance marked by the system, but looking through the window, Sook was really confused when he saw Jean Grey lying on the table, feeling bored. I said, the mysterious substance you are referring to is not Jean Grey, right? Suk asked in his heart with a speechless face. The mysterious substance is not Jean Grey, but the phoenix force in Jean Grey's body. The system replied, is there any difference? You know, the phoenix force is in Jean Grey's body. This is a pitfall. Suk was so angry that he wanted to hit someone. 
But then, Su Kei suddenly seemed to think of something and asked again, wait a minute. The purpose of you asking me to obtain the Phoenix Force should not be just a mission, right? You said before that my body can absorb and emit energy, does that mean that once I obtain the Phoenix Force, I will also possess the Phoenix Force? Thinking of this, Su Kei was inexplicably excited again, because the Phoenix Force is one of the most powerful forces in the Marvel Universe. Once he mastered the Phoenix Force, he would not be afraid even if the Goddess of Death came. But then, the system poured a basin of cold water on him. The Phoenix Force is one of the most advanced powers in the Marvel Universe. The host cannot master it with his current strength, but because of the special nature of the host's body, the host can absorb the Phoenix Force and use it as his own power. In addition, the host can also absorb and emit all the energy in the entire American comic world. The system explained. Su K finally understood it. To put it simply, his body is like a supercharger that can store or emit all kinds of energy at will, even as strong as the Phoenix Force. Although he can't have the Phoenix Force like Jean Grey, it seems good. By the way, how do we obtain the power of the Phoenix? After making up his mind, Su K asked again. It's very simple. The power of the Phoenix exists in Jean Grey's deepest genes. If the host wants to obtain it, he needs to have deep physical contact with Jean Grey. In simple terms, it is. You want me to sleep with Jean Grey. Before the system finished speaking, Su K had already guessed the answer. Yes, this is the most direct method. Other physical contacts are also acceptable, but the power gained will be less. Of course, the host can also let the Phoenix power in Jean Grey's body run wild and then absorb it. Su K was speechless, really speechless. He never thought that the system would come up with such an idea. Slept with Jean Grey. Sook thought so, but there must be a process for this kind of thing, right? For example, they should have a relationship first. If he forced himself on her, he would probably become the most shameless person in the Marvel and DC worlds. As for letting the Phoenix Force in Jean Grey run wild, Sook didn't even consider it, because the Phoenix Force's runaway is very dangerous, and he doesn't want to kill other people in the school. Besides, this is a nightmare for Jean Grey. Su K didn't want to hurt this innocent girl. Who, who is there? Suddenly, at this moment, Jean Grey seemed to have discovered something. She quickly walked to the window and opened it. Then, their eyes met. Sook was very embarrassed, and Jean Grey was a little surprised. Sook, why is it you? What are you doing here? Jean Grey looked at Sook in surprise and asked. Sook scratched his head and said awkwardly, Ah! I slept too long before, and now I can't fall asleep no matter what, so I thought of going out for a walk, and I didn't expect to end up here. By the way, Chin, why haven't you slept yet? I can't control my power. Even though it's already midnight, my mind is still filled with voices. Because of this, I sleep very late every day. Jean Grey said helplessly. So that's how it is. Suk laughed dryly, but for a moment he couldn't think of what to do next. The atmosphere became a little awkward. As if she had noticed the awkward atmosphere, Jean Grey blushed and said, Suk, do you want to come in and sit for a while? Okay, okay. Without any hesitation, Su K agreed immediately. Are you kidding? Jean Grey is an absolute beauty in the Marvel Universe. Only a fool would refuse such an invitation. Seeing that Su K agreed so readily, Jean Grey suddenly felt a little regretful. If other people knew about this, what would she do? But it seems useless to regret now, because Su K has jumped in from the window. Tonight is destined to be a sleepless night. After Su K came in, the atmosphere suddenly became awkward again. Su K was fine, after all, he was a man, but Jean Grey was different. You have to know that she was just a young girl who had just begun to fall in love. She invited a man into her room so blatantly, and at this time of the night, this was. This is really too embarrassing. If this were discovered, how would she face other students in school? When she thought of this, her face instantly turned red, like a ripe apple, and she looked particularly charming under the light. Seeing this, Su Kei's heart suddenly became a little moved. After all, he was an adult, so how could he not guess what Jean Grey was thinking at this moment? Coupled with the task issued by the system before, Su Kei really wanted to sleep with Jean Grey, but isn't this a bit hasty? You know, he and Jean Grey have only known each other for less than a day. Let's take our time with this matter. 
That, would you like something to drink? Just when Su Ke was thinking about it, Jean Grey suddenly asked. No, I'm not thirsty. Suk said with a smile, and then he thought of something and asked, By the way, Jean, do you know if there is a guy named Scott here? He is also called Cyclops. This guy is also a mutant. His eyes can emit red shock waves. He is also a powerful mutant. In the X-Men series, Cyclops has always been Jean Grey's official boyfriend. Soup just thought of it. He urgently wants to know whether Jean Grey knows Cyclops. If she doesn't know him, then everything is fine. If she knows him, then it doesn't matter. Anyway, Jean Grey is determined. Scott, Cyclops, I've never heard of this name, nor this ability. Is it true that there is such an ability to emit shock waves from the eyes? Jean Grey asked curiously. After hearing this, Suk was completely relieved. Sure enough, at this moment, Professor X had not recruited Cyclops. But then, he immediately said with disdain, Tisk, what's the big deal? I can also emit various energy beams from all parts of my body. After saying this, he raised his hand. With a thought, a dazzling white light appeared in his palm, illuminating the whole room. This is the energy of the sun, exclaimed Jean Grey. That's right, my current abilities are not very proficient, so I can only absorb and control some simple energy, but in the future, I will be able to control all the energy in the universe. Suk said confidently, this is not him bragging, it's just the truth. When it comes to the universe, Jean Grey instantly became interested again, and couldn't help but lean towards Suk, and then asked, Suk, can you tell me what the universe looks like? Is it beautiful? Of course, Suk said with a smile while lying comfortably on Jean Grey's bed, there are countless planets, countless species and scenery in the universe. In my hometown of Titan, when night falls, the stars in the sky will revolve around Saturn. The scenery is so beautiful. Really, now that you mention it, I suddenly want to go and take a look. But I'm not you, I can't go to the universe. Jean Grey stuck out her tongue and said, then she lay down next to Suk. Suk smiled gently and said, it's not impossible. My brain stores all the scenery I have seen and all the knowledge I know. I can let you see it all. After saying this, Suk gently stretched out his hand. Suk's mental power is very strong, which makes him immune to all psychic attacks and magical attacks, but as long as he is willing, he can also share everything stored in his mind. When Jean Green heard this, she laughed happily instantly, and then she also stretched out her hand. When the two hands were held together, they both closed their eyes unconsciously and began to fall into Suk's consciousness. On a beautiful planet, the stars in the sky are like a beautiful net covering the planet, illuminating everything on the planet. Not far away, Suk is holding the hand of Jean Grey, who is excited, and looking at everything with infinite nostalgia. In this way, unknowingly, the two began to fall into the deepest conscious sleep. Before falling into conscious sleep, the system reminder sounded. Ding! Mysterious substance detected. The mysterious substance is the power of the phoenix and is being absorbed. Professor, something bad has happened. Sook is missing. Hank's voice echoed throughout the school early in the morning. What? After hearing this news, Professor X broke out in a cold sweat. He immediately thought of many bad things, but he finally calmed down and started to gather everyone to search. There was no sign of him in the kitchen. There is no playground either. Neither do teachers. There are no dormitories either. What happened? Where did he go? Was he kidnapped by someone? Didn't Nick Fury call yesterday? S.H.I.E.L.D. has always felt that aliens are dangerous, maybe he did it. Wolverine said while smoking a cigar. No way, Hank said, with his ability, how could S.H.I.E.L.D. capture him? And I didn't hear any movement last night. What's going on? Have no idea. Just when everyone was confused, Professor X suddenly thought of something and asked, is Chin awake? I don't think so. I didn't see her just now. Mystique said. Go. Professor X heard this and stopped explaining. Instead, he walked towards Jean Green's room. Although the others didn't understand what was going on, they hurriedly followed him. Jin, are you there? Professor X asked after knocking on the door. However, at this moment, Sook and Jean Grey were still immersed in their deepest consciousness and could not hear any sound from the outside world. Open the door. No one answered. Professor X didn't hesitate any longer. With one command, the door was pushed open. 
In the next second, everyone was completely stunned. Their eyes were filled with incredible expressions. What did they see? They actually saw Suk and Jean Grey sleeping in the same bed together. And they were sleeping hand in hand. This, the atmosphere became awkward. As a telepath, Professor X knew that Suk and Jean Grey were communicating with each other, but in this situation, they couldn't continue. Although Professor X cannot enter Suk's mind, he can enter Jean Grey's mind. Jin, wake up, it's time for you to come back. In the deepest consciousness, a voice suddenly sounded in Jean Grey's mind, bringing her out of Suk's consciousness. Slowly opening her eyes, the first thing that appeared in front of her was Suk's extremely handsome face. Thinking of what happened last night, Jean Grey's face turned red again. Cough cough. At this moment, a somewhat awkward cough sounded, startling Jean Grey and instantly sitting up. Ah, teach, professor, Mr. Logan, Mr. Hank, got you. How did you get here? Jean Grey panicked. The thing she feared the most had happened. Professor X and the others were a little embarrassed. Although it seemed that nothing bad had happened between Su Ke and Jean Grey last night, the scene at the moment was too imaginative. So, this new alien boy slept with the most beautiful girl in our school on the first night. As if to ease the embarrassment, Logan suddenly spoke up. But his words made the scene even more awkward. Jean Grey blushed, got out of bed without saying a word, and rushed out the door. The remaining few people looked at each other, and finally their eyes fell on Su Ke who was lying on the bed. At this moment, Su Ke had not woken up yet. Professor X was a little curious. Logically speaking, Su Ke should have woken up in this situation. Then he took a closer look and suddenly realized that Su Ke had a very powerful power. Is this the Phoenix Force? What's going on? Could he even absorb the Phoenix Force in Jean? Professor X was shocked again. Not long ago, Jean Grey had once exploded with the Phoenix Force. Although he controlled it, that power left an indescribable shock in his heart. He knew in his heart that the Phoenix Force in Jean Grey's body was powerful enough to destroy the world. But even this power was absorbed by Sook. How powerful is this guy? Hank, go find Jean. Logan, you stay here and watch over Sook. When he wakes up, bring him to my office. Everyone else should do what they need to do. Professor X glanced meaningfully at Sook lying on the bed, gave instructions to the others, and then left. It was not until the afternoon that Su Ke woke up slowly. As soon as he opened his eyes, Wolverine's bearded old face came over. Boy, you finally woke up. Do you know that I have been guarding you here for a long time? Oh my god, I am not a babysitter, why do you let me do this? Wolverine said helplessly. Where's Jean? Where did she go? Sook asked directly, ignoring Wolverine's complaints. Upon hearing this, Wolverine suddenly became more energetic, approached Sook and said with a smirk, Boy, tell me, did you sleep with Jean Grey last night? Ah, uh, I never thought Wolverine would like gossip so much. Feeling helpless, Su Ke shook his head and said, No, we just chatted last night. Tisk, you are not honest at all. We are all men. What is there to be embarrassed about? It is obvious that Wolverine does not believe what Sook said. Ding. Congratulations to the host for successfully obtaining the mysterious substance. The mysterious substance is the power of the phoenix, and it has now been successfully integrated into the host's body. Mission reward. 10,000 villain points and one chance to draw a lottery. Do you want to draw a lottery now? Suddenly at this moment, the system's voice rang again. Su Ke was delighted, and then he thought of something, then looked at Wolverine in front of him and said, Mr. Logan, can you leave me alone for a while? I have some personal matters to take care of. No problem, I'm a little tired after watching you for so long, but remember to go find the professor later, he said before that he wants to see you after you wake up. Logan said as he lit a cigar, and then he left, closing the door before leaving. After Logan left, Suk closed his eyes and began to explore the phoenix power in his body. Sure enough, somewhere in the deepest part of his body, a ball of power like fire was being stored at this moment, which was the phoenix power. Opening his eyes, Suk's gaze moved to his hands again. As his mind moved, the phoenix power in his body suddenly seemed to be summoned and flowed along the tendons in his body, and then began to gather in his hands. Looking at the two balls of almost materialized phoenix power held in his hands, Suk just felt funny, he felt that he was about to become a magician. 
The Phoenix Force is a powerful energy, and since it was Su Kei's first time to come into contact with such a power, it would take a long time to absorb and integrate it, which is why he had been asleep for so long before. After checking the Phoenix Force, Su Kei asked, System, didn't you reward me with 10,000 villain points before? What are these points for? System points can be used to purchase any item in the system mall, host, please take a look. Then, a light curtain appeared in front of Su Kei, which was densely packed with things like commodities, and the classification was very clear, including weapons, physical skills, magic, armor and more than a dozen other categories. Su Kei clicked on the armor category. Mark 1 armor, 300,000 villain points. Mark 2 armor, 700,000. Mark 3 armor, 5 million. Transformers armor, points for villains. Gundam armor, points for villains. Su Kei was a little speechless. As far as he knew, the Mark I armor should be Iron Man's first armor, which was the one that Iron Man built in the cave in Iron Man 1. Its overall strength was so poor that it was indescribable. However, such a thing actually required 300,000 villain points. Of course, he didn't expect that the system actually had Transformers armor and Gundam armor. These two were pretty good. Then he looked through the system mall again, and when he found that he couldn't buy anything good with his few points, Su K lost interest. Ding, the host currently has one chance to draw a lottery. Do you want to draw the lottery now? The system reminded again, let's draw, I hope I can have better luck and win something good. Su K said, as soon as he finished speaking, the system mall in front of him suddenly disappeared, and in its place was a huge disc for drawing prizes, on which were densely marked various prizes. Upon closer inspection, there were things from other worlds. I must draw something good. After a while of silent thinking in his heart, Su Kei used his mind to turn the lottery disc. Then, the disc began to spin quickly, and it stopped after a long while. Ding, congratulations to the host for winning a copy of How to Cultivate Conquerors Hockey from the world of One Piece. Su Kei was a little dumbfounded. Although he already knew that he could draw things from other worlds, he never thought that he could draw the Conqueror's Hockey in the world of One Piece. There are three types of hockey in the world of One Piece, which are Armament Hockey, Observation Hockey and Conqueror's Hockey. Among them, Conqueror's Hockey is the most rare, and it cannot be obtained through practice, but can only be obtained by nature. Because he knows all the superhuman philosophies of the Eternal Clan, Su Kei's current physical strength can no longer be stronger. Armament Hockey is completely meaningless to him. Observation hockey may be a little useful, but it is definitely not as good as Conqueror's hockey. This is because people with Conqueror's hockey can use this hockey to intimidate and shock opponents without taking action, and can also make opponents weaker than themselves faint. For stronger ones, they can even begin to produce corresponding physical damage. For example, when Shanks went to see Whitebeard in One Piece, Shanks' Conqueror's hockey destroyed Whitebeard's ship. But of course, the most practical function of the Conqueror's Hockey is to clean up the soldiers. Once it is released during a group fight, at least half of the enemies will die directly. In general, Su Kei is still very satisfied. Although his mental ability is also very powerful and can make him immune to any mental attack, it is more precisely just a mechanism similar to defense. He cannot use mental ability to launch attacks. Conqueror's Hockey is a good way to make up for this. Moreover, in the world of American comics, all kinds of mental abilities can be cracked or resisted by some means, but Conqueror's Hockey is absolutely impossible to crack because it does not belong to this world. Simply put, with Conqueror's Hockey, Su Kei is equivalent to having a mental attack ability that no one in this world has. The next method of practicing Conqueror's Hockey appeared directly in Su Kei's mind. In just a moment, Su Kei has mastered Conqueror's Hockey. Although it is still a little weak at present, you must know that he has just obtained Conqueror's Hockey. With the super brain of the Eternal Clan, Su Kei believes that he will master Conqueror's Hockey soon. Thinking of this, Su Kei was excited again. After the excitement, Su Kei suddenly remembered what Wolverine had said before, and came to Professor X's office. Professor, are you looking for me? Professor X was the only one in the office at this time. Hearing Suk's voice, Professor X, first smiled, and then said, sit down, I just have something to ask you. After Suk sat down, the expression on Professor X's face suddenly became serious again. 
Then he controlled the wheelchair to come in front of Suk and asked, Suk, tell me, have you absorbed part of the Phoenix Force in Jean's body? Professor X is a powerful mutant, and he can help Jean Grey suppress the Phoenix Force. Naturally, this kind of thing can't be hidden from him, so Suk said directly, yes, but I don't know what's going on. Originally, I just wanted Jean to see the scenery of the universe through my consciousness last night, but I didn't expect to absorb part of her power by mistake. Suk naturally wouldn't say anything about the system. Then can you control the Phoenix Force? Professor X asked again, and it was obvious that he didn't care much about other things. Of course, my body can absorb and emit any energy in the universe, including the Phoenix Force. Su K said, and his mind moved again. In an instant, two fiery red balls appeared in his hands. When Professor X saw this scene, his face turned green, because he knew that if the two Phoenix Force balls in Su K's hands exploded, the power would definitely be no less than a nuclear bomb. Okay, put it away quickly. I'm just asking, as long as you can control it. Professor X, waved his hand and said, with a speechless face. It must be said that Suk's strength once again overturned his imagination. But of course, this is definitely a good thing for him. As Jean Grey grows up, Professor X, feels that he is about to be unable to deal with the Phoenix Force in her body. The appearance of Suk just makes up for this. If Jean Grey has any problems in the future, Suk can just absorb it. Moreover, after. Suk absorbs part of the Phoenix Force, Jean Grey should not have any problems for a long time. This is a good thing for everyone. Professor, is there anything else? If not, I want to go see Chin. Suk didn't see Chin when he woke up, and he really missed her now. This guy, is he really in love with Chin? But then again, Chin seems to like this guy too, which is a good thing, as long as they are together, Chin is safe. Thinking of this, Professor X, smiled and said, go. As soon as the voice fell, Professor X, felt a flash in front of his eyes, and Suk's figure completely disappeared in front of him. This guy, really has super speed. Professor X, thought helplessly. In the following period of time, Suk followed Professor X's advice and started taking classes like other mutant children, learning all the knowledge about mutants and other things. However, what surprised Professor X, was that Suk's IQ was so high that no matter how complicated the knowledge was, he would remember it after just reading it once. In just less than a week, Suk had learned all the knowledge they could teach him. You know, for an ordinary mutant child, this is nearly six years or even more than ten years of courses. After learning all the knowledge, Suk was unwilling to go to class anymore, and Professor X, didn't say anything. After all, if Suk was asked to go to class again, what was the difference between that and asking a doctor to attend elementary school classes? After thinking it over again, Professor X began to let Suk learn combat skills from Jean Grey, and asked Wolverine to teach him combat skills, and asked Alex, Cyclops' brother Shockwave, to teach Suk how to control energy. Similarly, Suk learned very quickly. In just one week, Wolverine and Shockwave had nothing to teach him. Moreover, in the recent period, Sook and Jean Grey were almost inseparable, and they were already a couple. Because Sook had absorbed part of the Phoenix Force from Jean Grey before, Jean Grey was unusually relaxed recently, and could even perform simple material control. This made Professor X very happy. After all, the power of the Phoenix Force is very strong. If Jean Grey can really control it completely, it would be a good thing for everyone. On this day, Sook got up early, washed up simply, and came to the playground, and Professor X and Hank were waiting for him here early. At present, Sook has learned all the knowledge and skills in the mutant school, and has almost mastered his abilities, so Professor X is going to let Sook try to expand his abilities. Or in other words, Professor X wants to know how powerful Sook is. Whenever powerful objects collide, huge amounts of energy are generated, which may be shock waves or other energies. If it has a certain amount of non-material energy, then the power will only be stronger. This energy may be uncontrollable, but you must learn to master it. On the playground, Professor X, explained seriously. Su K frowned at first, then reacted immediately and said, Professor, is this right? As he spoke, he stretched out his arms and prepared to slap him hard. Don't, don't face us, and the area here is too small, you'd better go further away. 
Seeing this, Professor X hurriedly stopped him. When Wolverine was teaching Sook fighting skills, Sook almost beat Wolverine to death. Although he gradually mastered the power, Wolverine was still seriously injured. However, with his strong self-healing factor, he was not in any trouble. But it was obvious that Professor X did not have any self-healing factor. He was really worried that Sook would accidentally hurt him. Okay, I understand. After nodding, Suke's body floated up. Instead of going far away, he might as well try it in the air. In the air, he shouldn't hurt others. After flying to an altitude of about 1,000 meters, Suke stopped, stretched out his arms again, and slapped his palm fiercely. Bang! In an instant, an extremely powerful shock wave suddenly exploded from his palm and then extended in all directions. WTF! This! This is an electromagnetic pulse. On the ground, Hank said in confusion. Some of the instruments placed nearby were already emitting smoke, obviously destroyed by the electromagnetic pulse just now. And behind them, all the electronic equipment in the entire school was also destroyed. Professor X was speechless again. He thought that Sook could generate shock waves, which was amazing. He didn't expect that this guy could actually generate shock waves containing electromagnetic pulses. This was beyond his expectations again. When Sook fell, Professor X and Hank didn't know what to say. What no one noticed was that just when Sook generated the electromagnetic pulse, a few kilometers away, an armor flying in the air suddenly lost power. Amid a panicked shout, the armor fell down and smashed the ground hard. In the big pit, Iron Man Tony Stark took off the mask on his face and said with a look of shock, Jarvis, this. What the hell is going on? What attacked me? After calling for several times and still not getting a response from Jarvis, Tony realized that the electromagnetic pulse just now must have destroyed the armor's communication system, so he couldn't contact Jarvis. He took out his cell phone and found that even the cell phone couldn't be used at the moment. Tony could only sigh helplessly. He was going to the mutant school to find Professor X, today. One was to ask about the previous alien crash, and the other was about mutants. However, what he didn't expect was that he was flying in the sky, and suddenly he was inexplicably attacked. Professor X knew that humans could not fully accept mutants, so the location of the mutant school was extremely remote, and no one lived within a radius of dozens of miles. Because of this, Tony couldn't find anyone to help him. What bad luck! Sighing helplessly, Tony climbed out of the pit and looked around. Not long after, he found a thick rope. One end of the rope was tied to the armor and the other end was just on his shoulder. In this way, Tony slowly dragged his armor to the mutant school. In the evening, Tony finally arrived at the mutant school. Professor X was not too surprised by Tony's arrival, because he knew that Tony would come sooner or later. Tony's arrival instantly attracted a large number of mutant children. He was completely surrounded before he took a few steps. After experiencing the incident in Iron Man 1, Tony admitted his identity in front of the cameras of the media around the world, admitting that he was Iron Man. This caused a great reaction worldwide, and at the same time, everyone knew him. Among the crowd, of course, was Sook, and Sook had already guessed it at this time. Needless to say, the armor that Tony was pulling now was knocked down by him. Hi, kids, how are you? Seeing himself surrounded by a group of mutant children, Tony hurriedly greeted them, and at the same time he became a little nervous. After all, he did not forget that these children in front of him were mutants with superpowers. Okay Tony, what on earth do you want to do here? A voice sounded, the crowd dispersed, and then Professor X appeared in front of Tony. Professor, don't get me wrong, I came to you for something serious, but before that, could you let me in for a drink of water? Just now when I was flying in the air, I was suddenly attacked and knocked down from the sky by an electromagnetic pulse. I'm really exhausted after dragging the armor for so long. Tony said faintly, throwing away the rope on his shoulder. As soon as these words came out, the expression on Professor X's face became a little unnatural, and so was Hank. After all, everyone knew what was going on. Okay, follow me. After saying this, Professor X began to lead the way. After walking two steps behind, Tony seemed to have thought of something, and then turned to Hank and said, by the way, could you help me deliver this armor to your maintenance room? 
The electromagnetic pulse destroyed the power function of the armor, and I have to repair it properly. No problem, Hank replied very readily. Soon, Professor X brought Tony to the office, along with Wolverine, Mystique and others, and of course, Sook. Although Professor X didn't want Tony to know about Sook's existence, he knew in his heart that Sook's current strength couldn't be hidden, so he simply ignored him. Besides, with Tony's ability, he couldn't do anything to Sook at all. After Tony drank three glasses of water in one breath, Professor X finally spoke, Tell me, Tony, why did you come here today? Seeing this, Tony didn't keep it a secret and said directly, This is a mutant school. I came here for mutants, not for aliens. In the last sentence, Tony was obviously referring to Sook, but Professor X automatically ignored it. However, Tony's words still aroused his interest. Tell me, what's going on? Professor X said slowly. Although Tony Stark is a playboy in everyone's eyes, his words are too unreliable, but you have to know that this is a mutant school. Professor X believes that Tony will definitely not joke about mutants here. To put it simply, two extremely powerful mutants suddenly appeared in New York City recently. One of them is a girl who can transform into a diamond form and has extremely powerful telepathy. The other one is a big guy. They call him Red Tank. He is a mutant with superpowers. These two guys have been giving me a headache recently, so I hope you can send someone to deal with them. Tony said, Diamond form, telepathy, wait, isn't this the White Queen? Hearing Tony talk about the characteristics of the mutant girl, Suke immediately guessed that Tony was talking about the White Queen. The White Queen's real name is Emma Grace Frost. Her superpowers are telepathy and diamond form. When she turns her body into diamond, she is almost immune to any physical attack. As for Red Tank, he is also an absolutely dangerous supervillain. Red Tank's real name is Kane Marco. He is a super big guy with a height of 287 cm and a weight of 1,600 pounds. His power is comparable to that of the Hulk and Thor. His collision ability can instantly destroy a building. His body is almost indestructible and can even resist Thor's Thor's hammer and Wolverine's adamantium claws. When Red Tank's body is activated, nothing can stop him. Simply put, this guy is a replica of the Hulk. In the movie Deadpool 2, the guy who was particularly eye-catching and successfully tore Deadpool in half was Red Tank. Tony probably hasn't created the anti-Hulk armor yet. The White Queen and the Red Tank are really enough for him. No wonder he asked Professor X for help. Professor X was silent for a while after hearing this. After a while, he said, Tony, go down and rest first. I will give you an answer before tomorrow morning. This is a matter of mutants. Professor X can't ignore it. However, the White Queen and the Red Tank are extremely dangerous. He needs to make a good plan. That, I have something else I want to ask you. Tony was not in a hurry to leave, but suddenly stood up and looked at Professor X with an intriguing expression. Ask it, Professor X, naturally knew what Tony was going to ask. In his opinion, this was something that could not be avoided, so he simply did not try to avoid it. More than half a month ago, my satellite detected that an alien lifeboat had landed at your school. If I'm not mistaken, the alien should still be in your school, right? I want to meet him. Tony said, what do you want to do with him? Do you want to make him into a specimen? Or do you want to dissect him? Before Professor X could speak, Wolverine on the side spoke first, and when he said this, he also gave Su K a smug look. Su K was a little speechless. Don't get me wrong. Tony waved his hand and said, I'm not interested in this kind of thing. I'm just curious. Before, our world already had a guy who wore his underwear outside and flew in the sky, and then there came a guy who held a hammer and could summon lightning. I'm curious about what kind of guy will come this time. Without a doubt, Tony was talking about Superman and Thor. Although he knew that this world was a fusion of Marvel and DC, Suke still felt a little uncomfortable when he heard about Superman from Iron Man. For a moment, he couldn't help but think of the topics that he had been arguing about in his previous life. Batman and Iron Man, who is better? Who is stronger, Superman or the Hulk? Thanos and Darkseid, who is the real overlord of the universe? After coming to this world, Suke felt that he could still verify it when he had time. Tony, I can agree to let you meet him, but you have to promise me that you won't reveal his true identity. 
Just when Sook was thinking about it, Professor X's voice rang again. Sook's alien identity was no longer a secret in the mutant school, and the children in the mutant school quickly accepted Sook's identity. After all, in the eyes of all humans, mutants were like aliens, which was why other people could accept Sook's identity. But it was obvious that Sook's identity was definitely too difficult for normal humans to accept. After all, even Superman, who grew up on Earth, was still considered an alien by some humans. Of course you can, Tony smiled and said, but you make me more and more curious, Professor. I wonder what this new alien friend looks like. Does he have eight eyes or eight legs? Or is he the same as E.T.? You should know E.T., right? It's the movie. As Tony's words became more and more outrageous, Suke was completely speechless, and Wolverine on the side almost laughed to death. In order to stop this guy from talking nonsense, Suke could only walk over and said expressionlessly, Hello, I am the alien you are looking for, my name is Suke. For a moment, Tony suddenly stopped laughing. Although Tony noticed that Suk followed Professor X and others in at the beginning, he didn't pay much attention to it. He just thought Suk was a mutant. After all, Suk was no different from ordinary humans. But who would have thought? This young man who looked inconspicuous was an alien. Before coming here, Tony had already made plans to communicate with the alien in a friendly manner. After all, judging from Professor X's previous attitude, the alien should not be a threat to the Earth. But his words just now seemed to have offended Suk. The atmosphere started to get awkward. Ha ha ha. Tony laughed awkwardly for a few times before he spoke. I was just joking just now, and it's obvious that you don't have eight legs, and you don't look like E.T. Sue K was speechless again. This guy is really good at chatting. Sensing that the atmosphere was a little strange, Professor X quickly said, Okay, Tony, you should go and have a rest first. I will give you an answer soon about what you said. No problem, then Professor, I'll be waiting for your good news. Tony couldn't wait to leave this place. Hearing this, he said hello to Professor X and left. I have never liked this guy. Wolverine suddenly took a puff of his cigar and said as Tony left. Sue K found it funny because according to his previous understanding of Wolverine, it seemed that this guy had some grudges with the entire Avengers, especially Hulk. Whenever the two met, they would basically fight to the death. No one knew what was going on. Then let's discuss what Tony said before. Professor X said, in fact, not long ago, I found a mutant with telepathy in New York City. They called her the White Queen, but she seemed to be immune to telepathy, so I couldn't find her exact location. Unexpectedly, Tony found her in the end. In addition to the White Queen, Red Tank is also a very troublesome opponent. Logan, I'm going to give this mission to you. Professor X said, looking at Wolverine. Wolverine has always been an extremely powerful fighter among all the mutants, so this matter was naturally handed over to him. Originally, Colossus was more suitable for this mission than Wolverine, but Colossus is currently performing other tasks outside with Iceman, Rogue and some other mutants, so this mission can only be given to Wolverine. When Wolverine heard this, his brows frowned and said, Professor, I'm not worried about Red Tank. I'm worried about the mutant with telepathy you mentioned. This will be very troublesome. I know, Professor X nodded and said, so I won't let you go alone on this mission. Jean has been doing well recently, so I plan to let her go with you. What? When Wolverine heard this, his hand shook unconsciously, and the cigar between his fingers fell to the ground. Professor, I think you should think carefully about this matter. Wolverine spoke seriously, which was rare. When the phoenix force in Jean Grey's body went out of control before, Wolverine was also beside her. It was that time that made him feel the threat of death. And he hasn't felt this way for a long time. He knows what kind of power it is and what kind of danger it will be once it goes out of control. After all, he is not Professor X, who can help Jean Grey control the phoenix force in her body. Although Wolverine did not say it clearly, Professor X, and others immediately understood Wolverine's concerns. Hank also said hesitantly, Professor, I also think this is a bit inappropriate. Professor, I also want to participate in this mission. At this moment, Suk's voice suddenly rang out. It has been more than half a month since he came to Earth. During this half month, Suk has been staying in the mutant school and has not been anywhere. It is finally time to go out. After all, 
he is not a mutant and it is impossible for him to stay in the mutant school forever. Professor X, was silent. In less than half a month, Sook has learned all the knowledge and combat skills they know. They have nothing to teach Sook now, and Sook came to Earth to live on Earth. In this case, he must integrate into human life instead of staying with mutants forever. After all, he is not a mutant. Besides, if Sook goes with him, this mission will be much simpler. After all, whether it is the White Queen or the Red Tank, they don't seem to be Sook's opponent, and with Sook, there is no need to worry that the Phoenix Force in Jean Green will go out of control. Thinking of this, Professor X nodded and said, Okay, kid, I have another request, which is that I hope you can temporarily disguise yourself as a mutant. After all, compared to your alien identity, the mutant identity is easier for people to accept. I promise you, Sook nodded. When Sook first traveled to this world, his planet was destroyed by his brother Thanos, and then he came to the mutant school. Although he didn't live here for a long time, for him, this place was equivalent to his home. Professor X, is equivalent to a kind elder, Wolverine is equivalent to a mentor or a buddy, Hank is equivalent to an older brother, and Mystique is like a big sister next door. Especially the existence of Jean Grey, which makes Sook feel at home here. It is also because of this that Sook has been living here peacefully. Otherwise, with his strength, who can stop him from leaving? In any case, with the addition of Sook, Wolverine, Hank and others can rest assured to let Jean Green go with them. In this way, the personnel going to New York this time were finally determined, led by Wolverine and Sook and Jean accompanied. Time passed quickly, and in the blink of an eye it was the next morning. I say, is it really necessary to dress like this? Sue Kay looked at the neatly prepared equipment in front of him speechlessly. At this moment, what appeared in front of him was nothing else but a set of X-Men's special equipment. It looked quite handsome, but Su Kei felt a little awkward in his heart, because it reminded him of his high school life. The era of uniform school uniforms. Ever since Magneto caused trouble in Washington, the professor has customized this kind of equipment in order to distinguish us from mutants like Magneto, and this kind of equipment has been approved by the president. Simply put, as long as we wear this equipment, the police and local government officials will not bother us. Hank explained on the side. Is there such a benefit? After hearing what Hank said, Sook stopped talking and put it on after picking a suitable one. On the side, Wolverine and Jean Grey were also dressed neatly. This was Jean Grey's first mission. Before this, Jean Grey had been staying in the mutant school and had never been on a mission. Even though Professor X had explained everything before, she was still a little nervous. Sook reached out, gently took Jean Grey's hand and smiled, Jin, don't be afraid, I'm here for everything. This is not an empty talk, but a promise. He will always protect Jean Grey, the girl he loves and everything around him. In the future, Apocalypse will appear, the X-Men will be on the verge of extinction, and the arrival of his brother Thanos will plunge everything in the world into panic. But no matter what, Sook will keep his promise. He will definitely protect everyone and everything he loves and cares about. With Sook's comfort, Jean Grey finally relaxed. On the other hand, Hank kept telling Wolverine one thing, that is, never kill anyone again. Wolverine is the backbone of the X-Men and has been on many missions. Every time he goes on a mission, he will cause a serious social impact, because if those bad guys fall into his hands, most of them will die. Faced with Hank's instructions, Wolverine impatiently agreed, but there was an indifferent look in his eyes. Obviously, he didn't take Hank's words to heart. Sook knew that Wolverine was a special one among the X-Men. Everyone else followed the principle of not killing people, but Wolverine was the exception. He never cared about it, so he didn't care that much. After everything was ready, the three of them came to the plane used by the X-Men. After looking around, Wolverine said curiously, it's really strange, where is the iron can? Needless to say, the iron can refers to Iron Man. Hello, are you looking for me? Along with a voice, a steel armor suddenly appeared in the air, looking very cool. The mutant girls not far away couldn't help but scream. Iron Man is indeed worthy of being called a show-off. I really hate this guy. Spitting fiercely, Wolverine walked into the plane. Sook had the ability to fly, so he didn't need to take a plane, but when he flew up, Tony was still a little surprised. After coming to his senses, Tony chased after him. 
Chapter 11 Because of the incident in which Magneto caused trouble in Washington, ordinary humans already knew about the existence of mutants. In addition, Tony had previously admitted in front of reporters that he was Iron Man, so when Suk, Tony, and Wolverine came to New York City, it did not cause much of a stir. Even so, the showy Tony still caused the girls below to scream. But Suk was too lazy to pay attention to Tony at this time. He flew over New York City, observing everything in this bustling city. He really had some inexplicable impulses in his heart. Sure enough, the life in the mutant school was not suitable for him. He was more suitable for modern urban life. Regarding the two mutant robberies that occurred in New York City, I am sure that this incident must be related to Spider-Man. Spider-Man is a termite, a termite that lives in New York City and jumps around. I call on everyone to drive Spider-Man out of New York City and let this city have a better life. At this moment, a loud noise suddenly came from below. Sue Kay looked down and almost laughed out loud. What appeared below was a huge LCD screen. On the screen was James, the boss of the Daily Bugle. At this moment, James was still scolding Spider-Man as usual. Of course, he also blamed Spider-Man for the mutant incident. Spider-Man is really unlucky to have such a guy. But since we are in New York City, it seems a bit unreasonable not to meet Spider-Man. Sook, your name is Sook, right? Just as he was thinking, Tony's voice suddenly rang in Sook's ears. Sook rolled his eyes in his heart, knowing that Tony must have something to say, and said directly, Okay, Tony, just say whatever you want to say. Tony smiled first, and then said, What are your plans after this matter is over, will you continue to stay in the mutant school or what? If you want, you can stay here, I. What, are you inviting me to join the Avengers? Before Tony could finish his words, Sook suddenly spoke up and interrupted him. The Avengers, wait, how did you know about this? Tony asked in surprise. You know, the Avengers is still just an idea of his, and it has not been truly implemented. He has never told anyone about it, so no one should know about it, right? For a moment, Sue Kay also hurriedly reacted. It seems that the Avengers should not have been established yet. Just when he was about to explain, Tony suddenly thought of something, and then said with an annoyed look, it seems that Professor X has read my memory again. Didn't this guy say that he would not read my memory again? Obviously, Tony believed that Professor X had read his mind and told Su K. Seeing this, Su K was too lazy to explain anything. Poor Professor X, he just took the blame for Su K. After complaining about Professor X, Tony said again, Yes, that's what I mean. After this matter is dealt with, I hope you can join the Avengers. I always feel that the world will encounter some dangers in the future, and such dangers are not something I can deal with alone. I need your help. Joining the Avengers is a good idea, but don't forget that you still have a supervillain brother Thanos, and you are not the kind of person who can work in a team at all. Thinking of this, Sook could only laugh and said, let's talk about this later. Let's deal with the red tank and the white queen first. Tony was not angry at Sook's answer, because no rejection meant there was hope. Anyway, he would never give up on winning over such a powerful force as Sook. After flying for a while, they finally arrived at the Stark Tower, which is the future base of the Avengers. It has to be said that Tony is really generous. His Stark Tower is almost the most eye-catching building in the entire New York City. He really deserves to be called the show-off. Tony and Stark landed steadily on the rooftop, followed by Wolverine and Jean Grey. Tony, you're finally back. As soon as they entered Stark Tower, a woman came in with a look of concern on her face. Needless to say, this was Tony's girlfriend, Pepper Potts. Dear, I'm fine. By the way, let me introduce you. These are the mutant heroes I invited from X school. They will help me deal with Red Tank and White Queen. Tony introduced Pepper to him while removing his armor. In fact, Pepper knew their identities through the clothes worn by Sook and others without any introduction. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to New York, said Pepper enthusiastically. Faced with Pepper's enthusiasm, even Wolverine, who had always been prejudiced against Tony, couldn't show his displeasure. However, Despite this, Wolverine still sat down on the sofa beside him, then lit a cigar and said, any wine? I'm used to drinking before going on a mission. Of course, we have all kinds of wine here, what do you need? Little Pepper said quickly, vodka will do. 
Wolverine said, looking at Sook and Jean Grey beside him and said, Boys, what do you two want to order? No need. Sook waved his hand and said, I'm going to go out with Jean to see if I can find Red Tank and White Queen. You really don't know how to enjoy yourself. Shaking his head, Wolverine stopped talking. Although he was the leader of the team this time, he knew in his heart that he couldn't order Sook, and Sook might not listen to him, so he didn't bother to say anything. Tony suddenly thought of something, and handed Sook a black card and said, Sook, I'm sorry for what happened yesterday. This is a credit card. It's my apology. Please accept it. The X-Men don't have a salary, and Sook doesn't have a penny on his body. The same is true for Jean Grey. Sook was just thinking about whether to find a way to get some money to spend, but he didn't expect that the money would be delivered to his door at this time. Thinking of this, Sook was not polite. He smiled and took the credit card handed by Tony, and then he went out with Jean. As soon as Sook and Jean left, Pepper said to Wolverine with a worried look on her face, Mr. Logan, Red Tank and White Queen are both very dangerous. Are you going to let these two kids go find them? What if they get hurt? In Pepper's opinion, even if Sook and Jean are mutants with powerful powers, they are still just two 15 or 16 year old children. It is too dangerous to let them act alone. Injured, hearing this, Logan just laughed. One is a telepath with the power of the Phoenix, and the other is an alien with super strength, super speed, and abilities that have not yet been fully developed. If these two guys go out, it would be good if they don't let others get hurt. Who the hell can hurt them? Isn't this a joke? Pepper, don't worry, they are not ordinary children, don't worry. Tony said with a relaxed look. Seeing this, Pepper didn't know what to say. When they came to the downstairs of Stark Building, Sook naturally took one of Tony's luxury cars, and then took Jean to the center of New York City. Sook was a young man of 17 or 18 in his previous life, and it was the same in this life. At his age, he naturally liked to play the most. Now that he finally came to New York City, he naturally wanted to have a good time. As for the mission, let's talk about it later. Anyway, there is no news about Red Tank and White Queen at the moment. Jean hasn't been to New York City for a long time. Looking out the window at this big city full of vitality, she was also excited. Then, she thought of something again, and then turned to look at Sook who was driving on the side and said, Sook, are we going to find Red Tank and White Queen now? Of course not, Sue K said. It's rare for you to come out once, I want to take you to have some fun first, as for the matter of Red Tank and White Queen, we'll talk about it later. Jin is just a 15-year-old girl at this moment, and she is at the age of playing. When she was in the mutant school before, she became extremely withdrawn because she was afraid of her own power. She neither communicated with others nor wanted to go out. But since Sue K came, her personality has changed dramatically. At this moment, she is just a playful little girl. With a sweet smile, Chin said nothing more, but looked at Su Kei with more enthusiasm. Since they were going out shopping, wearing this set of X-Men equipment would be too conspicuous. After parking at a high-end clothing store, Su Kei took Chin in. When they came out, they each wore a set of expensive brand name clothes. At the same time, Su K also knew that the credit card Tony gave him actually had a limit of 5 million US dollars, which surprised him. But no matter what, he is not short of money at the moment. After buying clothes, the two came to a high-end restaurant. Because they were dressed gorgeously and drove high-end sports cars, the waiters were naturally very enthusiastic. Look, sir, this is our specialty. It tastes very good. I recommend it to you. Boom. Just as the waiter was enthusiastically introducing his signature dish, a huge explosion sounded from above, and then a red and blue figure fell down along with a pile of rubble. Ah, this sudden change caused the guests in the restaurant to scream and then flee. The next second, a spider head poked out from the rubble and said speechlessly, I will definitely be late to go home now. And May will definitely scold me. Not far away. Su K was also speechless, because he did not expect that he would meet Spider-Man in such an occasion. After finally standing up from the ruins, Spider-Man yelled at the people in the restaurant, I'm sorry to disturb everyone's lunch time, but there's nothing we can do. A huge lizard monster suddenly appeared in this city. Advice from Spider-Man, if you don't want to be eaten by a giant lizard, leave here quickly. Obviously, 
even if Spider-Man didn't say it, no one was willing to stay here any longer, because in the next second, a huge green monster suddenly fell from the sky and hit hard not far away. Looking at the appearance of the monster, it was clearly a big green lizard. Su K was amused. He didn't expect that this time he would not only meet Spider-Man, but also meet Professor Lizard, one of Spider-Man's mortal enemies. Professor. Lizard's real name is Curtis Kurt Connors. He was a military doctor before. After retiring from the army, he became a university biology professor. Because he lost his right arm in the war, he has been studying limb regeneration technology. Later, based on the lizard's ability to regenerate its tail, Connors was inspired to develop a drug containing lizard DNA serum and injected it into his body. Unexpectedly, the drug produced strong side effects. Although Connors successfully regenerated his broken arm, he also turned into a half-human, half-lizard monster. When he was a human, he was a very kind person, but when he was a lizard man, he was just a cruel and cold-blooded killer. Hey, what's wrong with you two? Why don't you go out? This is not a place for ordinary people to stay. Then, Spider-Man also found Sook and Chin, which surprised him. He didn't expect that there were still people here. Sook smiled and said, don't worry about us, Spider-Man, just do your thing. You, oh no, Spider-Man was about to say something when the spider sense in his mind suddenly sounded a warning. Looking back, he saw the lizard man rushing towards him with his huge tail swinging. He couldn't dodge in time and was whipped away, then hit the wall hard. Jean looked at Spider-Man with some concern, then said to Sook, Sook, should we help him? Help him, stupid human, who do you think you are? How dare you say such big words? Before Su K answered, the lizard man not far away spoke up, and then began to point the spearhead at Su K and Chin, and began to walk over step by step. Chin saw such a monster for the first time, and she became a little nervous. Don't be afraid, I'll take care of everything for you. He first comforted Chin softly, then Su K looked at the lizard man not far away with a playful look and said, this is really ironic, Dr. Connors, before you became this monster, weren't you also an ordinary human being? What? When the lizard man heard this, his steps suddenly stopped. He never thought that this inconspicuous child in front of him actually knew his true identity. You know, he has never told anyone about this matter. What? Dr. Connors, you said this lizard monster is Dr. Connors. Spider-Man descended from the sky and spoke in disbelief. Spider-Man knew Dr. Connors because he was a celebrity in the biological research industry and had given lectures at Spider-Man's school. However, Spider-Man still couldn't connect the monster in front of him with the kind doctor because the difference was too great. Stupid human, even if you know about this, what does it matter? You will all die here anyway. I'm going to kill you. The lizard man said, and his whole body suddenly swelled up again, becoming stronger. He stretched out his sharp and shining nails and pointed at Sook and said, I'll start with you. Sook was not angry. On the contrary, he felt that this was an opportunity, the first opportunity for actual combat. Seeing that the lizard man was about to attack Sook, Spider-Man panicked for a moment and hurriedly said, Don't, just come to me if you have anything, I am your opponent, don't hurt innocent people. As he spoke, Spider-Man was ready to take action. But Soup didn't want Spider-Man to interfere in this matter, although this was originally Spider-Man's enemy. Chin, stop him. As soon as Soup opened his mouth, Chin immediately understood what he meant. Then, Chin looked at Spider-Man and telepathically began to work. Spider-Man felt as if his body was controlled by someone and he couldn't move at all. What happened? Spider-Man was a little confused. On the other side, the lizard man was already waving his huge claws and rushing towards Sook. The claws flashing with white light made people shudder, but Sook still had a blank expression on his face. Just when the lizard man's claws were about to pierce Sook, Sook finally moved. Swish. In an instant, the lizard man only felt a flash in front of his eyes, and Sook's figure suddenly disappeared. Then, there was a sudden sound from behind him. A chill. Behind. The lizard man was startled and turned his head quickly. Then, he saw a fist hitting him. Boom. With a loud bang, a wave of air began to spread outward, instantly blasting all the glass in the restaurant. The air wave continued to spread outward, shattering all the car windows within a radius of one kilometer with this restaurant as the center. 
In addition, the ground began to tremble, like an earthquake. After the smoke cleared, a huge pit with a diameter of 10 meters appeared in the hall of the restaurant. In the pit, the lizard man who was knocked unconscious by Su Kei's punch was found. Spider-Man was completely stunned. This is not the first time Spider-Man has fought against Professor Lizard. They have fought several times before, but Spider-Man failed almost every time. There were even several times when Spider-Man was almost killed by Professor Lizard. Because of this, Spider-Man knows the power that Professor Lizard possesses, which is a very powerful power. But now, such a powerful Professor Lizard was killed by a punch by the boy in front of him. Look how powerful this guy must be. Jean did not react much to the result of this incident, because in her opinion it was the most normal thing. After all, according to Hank's test, Sook's power should be unlimited, and defeating a monster is nothing. After defeating Professor Lizard, Jean no longer controlled Spider-Man's actions. As soon as the telepathy was removed, Spider-Man fell to the ground suddenly, but he reacted quickly enough and jumped up with his hands lightly. Wow, is this telepathy? Are you mutants? And, you are so strong that you killed this guy with just one punch. As soon as he landed, Spider-Man came to Sook and Jean, and said in a surprised tone. Sook shook his head slightly and said, I thought this guy should have stronger power, but it turns out that I thought too much, this guy's power is really too weak. Forehead. Spider-Man was speechless. How could this guy be weak? It's obviously because you are too strong, okay. Despite this, Spider-Man still extended his hand to Su Kei in a friendly manner. Hello, I'm Spider-Man. My name is Suk, from Mutant School, this is Chin. Halfway through his words, Su Kei suddenly remembered Professor X's instructions and quickly changed his words. My guess was right, you are really mutants. I have met some mutants before, one of them was so big that even tanks couldn't do anything to him, and another one could turn his whole body into diamonds. Spider-Man seemed to have heard something. Hearing this, Su Kei and Chin couldn't help but look at each other. They didn't expect to get the news about Red Tank and White Queen here. Then, just when Su Kei was about to ask carefully what was going on, a loud noise sounded outside the door. Listen up, people inside. You have been surrounded by S.H.I.E.L.D. Please put down your weapons immediately and attack. S.H.I.E.L.D., why are these guys here? Su Kei was a little surprised, but then he was relieved. After all, this is the world of American comics, and no matter what happens, it is normal. Jean and Spider-Man were a little nervous when they heard the voice. Spider-Man looked at Dr. Connors, who was gradually turning into a human in the pit, and said, Drive Connors as a good man. I can't let him fall into the hands of S.H.I.E.L.D. I have to take him away from here. Jean came to Sook and whispered, Sook, S.H.I.E.L.D. has never accepted mutants. The professor said before that we can't have conflicts with S.H.I.E.L.D. Let's get out of here quickly. Su K naturally wouldn't take S.H.I.E.L.D. to heart. With his current strength, S.H.I.E.L.D. can't do anything to him at all, but considering Jean, he finally nodded. Spider-Man, follow me. After saying this, Su K hugged Chin in his arms, and then flew out directly from the big hole that Professor Lizard had knocked open on the roof. Well, this guy can actually fly. Spider-Man looked at Sook speechlessly, then carried Dr. Connors on his shoulder, and then shot out a spider silk from his wrist. When S.H.I.E.L.D. rushed in, it was already empty. In the big pit, a one-eyed black man first frowned and observed the surrounding environment, then looked at a S.H.I.E.L.D. agent behind him and said, Phil, who do you think did this? I don't know, Phil Coulson said as he looked down at the file but according to our database, there seems to be a special cosmic energy here. Cosmic energy, you said this was done by aliens. Nick Fury's eyes lit up, as if he had thought of something. On the other side, Sook, Jean and Spider-Man also stopped in a remote place. First, they carefully tested whether Dr. Connors was still breathing. After confirming that Dr. Connors was still alive, Spider-Man was relieved. Don't be happy too soon. He has only temporarily restored his human form, the serum is still working, it won't be long before he turns into a lizard man again. Sook said calmly. What? Spider-Man was confused when he heard this, thinking that this matter was not over yet. Is there no way to make Dr. Connors return to normal? Spider-Man asked with some reluctance. I don't know about this, but he became like this because of the lizard DNA serum. 
If we can optimize this serum or create a corresponding antidote, it should be able to help him return to normal. Su Ke said thoughtfully. Yeah, why didn't I think of that? Spider-Man was delighted when he heard this, and when he looked at Dr. Connors again, he finally breathed a sigh of relief. After all, he had a good relationship with Dr. Connors, and he really didn't want to watch Dr. Connors turn into a monster or be locked up forever. Because he was punched by Sook, Dr. Connors is still sleeping and can't be woken up. Spider-Man doesn't know where his home is, and S.H.I.E.L.D. should still be looking for them. Spider-Man can only wait until night to send Dr. Connors back. Taking advantage of this time, Jean asked hurriedly, By the way, you said before that you had seen two mutants, one of whom had the ability to turn himself into diamonds. Do you remember where you saw them? Of course I remember, but, Spider-Man said, hesitating a little. Seeing Spider-Man's hesitation, Jean stopped asking questions. With a thought, she got the information she wanted in an instant. But at this moment, her face turned very ugly again. What's wrong? Su Ke asked with some confusion. Mutant fighting arena. There's a mutant fighting arena in New York City. Red Tank and White Queen are there, and there are other mutants besides them. Jean said nervously. Spider-Man was surprised when he heard this and shouted, What? How did you know? I didn't say anything. Did you read my memory again? Is it necessary? I will definitely tell you. Spider-Man looked annoyed. The reason why he hesitated was because he had been to the mutant fighting arena before, and he didn't want anyone to know about it. But now it seems a little late. Ignoring Spider-Man who had been complaining, Su Ke finally understood why Jean was so nervous when she heard about the mutant fighting arena. In the Marvel world, since people knew about the existence of mutants and knew that mutants have powerful powers, mutants have begun to attract the attention of some people. These people include gangs, wealthy people, and the military. The most common among them is the mutant fighting arena that is everywhere. The fighting of ordinary humans is no longer a new thing, and people are no longer surprised. In comparison, the fighting between mutants with various superpowers is what the rich people look forward to. In this way, the mutant fighting arena came into being, but of course, except for a few volunteers, most of the mutants who participated in the fight were forced to participate or were forcibly captured. Su Ke had read many comics and movies about X-Men before. In fact, most of them mentioned mutant fighting arenas. It is worth mentioning that because mutants have powerful strength, the fights between them usually end with the death of one side. This is a contempt for mutant life. As a powerful mutant, Professor X would naturally not let such a thing happen and ignore it. However, such mutant fighting arenas are usually well hidden and will move from time to time, so Professor X has always been powerless and can only save one when he encounters one. Wait, if this is true, then doesn't it mean that Red Tank and the White Queen were also forced to do bad things? Su Ke shook his head, because he suddenly thought that Red Tank was a complete villain. Whether he was forced or not, he had always been doing bad things. On the other hand, the White Queen, although she appeared as a villain at the beginning, eventually became an X-Men. Anyway, it seemed that he had to go to the mutant fighting arena, but he couldn't take Jean with him, after all, that place was too dangerous. Su Ke, we have to go back. We need to tell Mr. Logan and the professor about this matter. Just thinking about it, Chin suddenly grabbed Su Ke's arm and said, with a nervous look on her face. Su Ke was delighted but said seriously, Chin, you were right, then this matter will be handed over to you. Go back to find teacher Logan and discuss with the professor what to do. I will stay here and continue to gather information. What, you're not going back with me? Chin asked worriedly. We don't know where the mutant fighting arena is yet, I'm going to let Spider-Man take me to find it, don't worry, with my power, do you think anyone can hurt me? Su Ke said with a smile. Seeing this, Chin didn't know what to say anymore, and after instructing Su Ke a few more times, she left. After Chin left, Su Ke looked at Spider-Man behind him and said, Now, please take me there. Are you sure you want to go? Spider-Man said reluctantly, That place is more dangerous than you think, and I have to watch Professor Connors here, I really can't leave. Obviously, Spider-Man didn't want to go to the mutant fighting arena. Su Ke was not angry but just smiled and said, why? Is the dignified Spider-Man Peter Parker scared? Scared, are you kidding me? I'm not, etc. 
What did you call me just now? How do you know my name? Spider-Man rushed to Sook and asked in astonishment. You know, his identity has always been a secret, and no one knows it except him. This is simply too weird. Sook just felt funny in his heart, but still said mysteriously, Don't worry about how I know it, anyway, I need your help. New York City is very large, and the mutant fighting arena is deliberately hidden. In addition, Sook is not familiar with New York City. It is too difficult for him to find the mutant fighting arena, so he thought of letting Spider-Man lead the way. Although this is a bit unkind. After hesitating for a long time, Spider-Man finally took off the mask on his face, and then said helplessly, Okay, I promise to take you there, but I can only help you get in, not go in with you, and you have to keep my identity a secret for me, and you can't tell anyone. Don't worry, Sue K smiled and said. After hiding Connors in a secret place and taking off his spider suit, Spider-Man set off with Sue K. When night fell, the two finally came to a hotel that looked very high-end. There were all kinds of luxury cars parked outside the hotel. There were bodyguards guarding everywhere, and everyone was equipped with a pistol. Obviously, this was not an ordinary place. Is this the mutant fighting arena you mentioned? Sook asked softly, looking at the hotel not far away. Peter Parker, who had taken off his Spider-Man coat, nodded and said, Yes, it is here. The mutant fighting arena is dozens of meters underground in this hotel. This hotel is just a cover. At this point, Peter Parker said again, The mutant fighting arena is not open to outsiders. Only acquaintances can enter here, so this method is naturally not feasible. Moreover, this place cannot be forced, because once threatened, the mutant fighting arena will be quickly closed and the mutants will be quickly transferred. In this way, your trip will be in vain. Sook was curious, because Spider-Man seemed to know this mutant fighting arena too well, right? Thinking of this, he asked, I'm really a little curious, why do you know so much about this place? Peter Parker blushed at first, and then he said with embarrassment, when I first got the ability of spiders, I was mistaken for a mutant and was captured by them, so. Forehead, Sue K was speechless, but then he said, okay, thank you for sending me here. Leave the rest to me. Go, Professor Connors should be awake by now. When? Peter Parker heard this, he suddenly remembered that Professor Connors was still lying in the wilderness. I'll go first, be careful. After saying this in a low voice, Peter Parker left. It might be difficult for others to enter here quietly, but it was not the case for Sue K, because among his many abilities, he also had super speed. Although this speed was not as fast as the Flash, it was absolutely impossible for ordinary people to detect it. Sir, please show me your membership card. At the entrance of the hotel, two security guards were checking the people entering. After the guests took out their membership cards, they moved aside to make way. Swish. But suddenly at this moment, the two security guards felt as if something flashed in front of their eyes, and even the ties on their chests were blown up. Strange. What's going on? The two thought with some doubts in their hearts, but with the arrival of the next guest, they didn't care much. At the same time, Sue K has arrived at the mutant fighting arena located dozens of meters underground. The underground mutant fighting arena was full of people in a frenzy, and with the shining lights, no one noticed Sook's arrival. In the center of the venue, there was a huge arena, which was completely covered by a thick electric net, leaving no gaps. There was only a small door on one side for mutants to enter. The electric net was covered with bloodstains, and some places even had burnt flesh hanging on it, which showed the cruelty of the mutant fighting arena. Kill him, kill him, get rid of him, you fool. I bet on your winnings, get up now. As the shouts rang out, Sue K looked towards the ring. At this moment, two mutants were fighting in the ring. One of them was covered with spikes all over his body, just like a hedgehog man, and the other had a long scorpion tail and moved like a scorpion. Although the hedgehog man was covered with long spikes all over his body, the scorpion man was not a vegetarian. He swung his long tail and pulled out a spike from the hedgehog man from time to time, making him grimace in pain. Su K had no interest in such a fight, but he couldn't help but feel some sympathy for these two guys in his heart. After all, everyone could see that these two guys were completely forced to fight. Sure enough, in this world, if you are not strong enough, you will be enslaved by others. Sighing slightly in his heart, 
Su Ke found a place not far away to sit down, and then began to look around. Spider-Man was right. The security measures here were indeed very good. Even inside the fighting arena, there were armed security guards everywhere, watching everything at all times. In addition, there were many cameras around. It was obvious that the criminals who ran this place were very concerned about safety. Yeah, I knew this guy would win. That scorpion-looking guy made me lose $50,000. Ha 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 ha, I won $100,000. Soon, the battle in the fighting field was decided. The hedgehog man finally defeated the scorpion man, but he was also seriously injured. As for the scorpion man, the hedgehog man's spikes pierced his body with blood holes of all sizes, but this guy was also tenacious and did not die. It seemed that the hedgehog man should have deliberately avoided the vital points. No one died in this battle, which should be considered relatively good. At this time, Su Ke finally understood the layout of this place. Swish. With a thought. Su Ke used super speed and instantly entered behind an iron door without anyone noticing. Behind the iron door was a long corridor. At the end of the corridor was a huge open space. On the open space were rooms similar to cells, where various mutants were imprisoned. A rough count showed that there were more than 30 people. At the same time, in a cell, two tall black men were dragging a blindfolded man of about 17 or 18 years old from the ground to a chair, and then took a rope, seemingly to tie him up. The blindfolded man did not resist at all and seemed to have fainted. I don't know if it was because of the force, but the unconscious blindfolded man suddenly shook his body, which instantly scared the black man. Can you be gentler? This guy is a very powerful mutant who can emit red shock waves from his eyes. If he looks at us, we will be dead, said a black man in shock. What are you afraid of? Didn't you see the suppressor on his neck? With this thing, there's nothing to worry about. Another black man said impatiently, tying the rope tighter. That's true, but isn't it true that suppressors are sometimes useless? And this guy is too dangerous. Danger is not a fart, we. Hum, boy, who are you? The other black man was about to answer, but suddenly saw a strange figure appear at the door, and he was stunned. Su Ke was too lazy to pay attention to the two black men at this moment, but looked at the man who was tied to the chair and blindfolded and unconscious. He really didn't expect to meet Cyclops here. In the X-Men, Cyclops has always been an extremely important existence. Cyclops' real name is Scott Summers. He is a powerful mutant who was born with the ability to emit red shock waves from his eyes. He was later recruited by Professor X to join the X-Men. Because he has extremely outstanding leadership skills, he has served as the captain of the X-Men for a long time. Later, he succeeded Professor X as the dean of the X Academy and became the leader of almost all mutants. Also, it is worth mentioning that in the original plot of the Marvel Universe, Cyclops has always been Jean Grey's standard boyfriend, but of course, with Sook coming to this world, such a thing no longer exists. Jean Grey can only belong to Sook. But to be honest, Sook was more or less surprised to meet such a person in this place. At this time, the two black men who were tying up Cyclops were already a little impatient. Almost instantly, two pistols were pointed at Sook. Boy, who are you? This place is absolutely forbidden to outsiders. How did you get in? Tell me quickly, or I will be rude. One of the black men threatened. The place where mutants are imprisoned has always been the most important place for them. The boss's permission is required to enter and exit. How could a stranger be allowed in? This matter must be very complicated. But it is obvious that their threats are of no use to Suke. Su Ke is too lazy to say a word. His eyes were stern, and a suffocating momentum suddenly burst out from Su Ke, and then quickly rushed towards the two black men in front of him. Almost instantly, the two black men fell to the ground with their bodies tilted, and fainted completely. This is the power of the domineering color. Waste. Su Ke snorted contemptuously, and then he slowly walked over. After standing in front of Cyclops, he patted Cyclops and said, Hey, wake up. Maybe the force was a little too strong, Cyclops actually woke up. But the first thing this guy did when he raised his head was to impatiently tear off the cloth covering his eyes. Su Ke was shocked and thought to himself, oh no. He hurried to stop him, but he was still a step too late. Boom. In an instant, two red shock waves containing powerful energy swept all around. 
all the surrounding buildings were no different from tofu under the power of the red shock waves. Cursing inwardly, Su Kei quickly reached out to cover Cyclops' eyes. The powerful shockwave directly hit his hands, but he only felt a slight warmth. At the same time, the system's voice also rang. Ding! Shockwave energy is detected and is being absorbed. Please wait. Ignoring the system's prompt, Suk shouted in Cyclops' ear, Scott, I'm not your enemy, I'm here to rescue you, close your eyes. Cyclops' shockwaves could not cause any harm to Suk, and would even be converted into his own energy. If it were any other time, Suk would not bother to stop him, but it was obviously not the time now, because there were more than 30 mutants to be rescued. Sure enough, when Cyclops heard this, he closed his eyes immediately, and then said in a daze, You. Who are you? How do you know my name? When facing mutants, the mutant identity is naturally more useful. Thinking of this, Suk said, My name is Suk, from the mutant school, and I am here to rescue you. So that's how it is. Hearing this, Cyclops was relieved, but then he seemed to think of something, and then said anxiously, Oh no, I. Did I hurt you just now? You didn't hurt me, but others are in trouble. Su Kei said helplessly. Cyclops's reckless attack not only destroyed the structure here, but also destroyed many prisons and hurt many mutants. When these guys came out, they all had ferocious faces and were about to skin Cyclops alive. Hey, you guys, don't be ungrateful. Run now. If you get caught again, you won't be so lucky. Speaking, Su Kei quickly moved to each mutant, and then tore off the suppressor on their necks, and then punched the wall next to them. Boom, with a thunderous roar, the whole prison shook, and after the vibration, a big hole leading to the ground suddenly appeared in front of their eyes. This, all the mutants couldn't help but gasp. Even the mutants who were about to cause trouble for Cyclops didn't dare to take another step forward. Very good. Su Kei nodded with satisfaction and said, Now use your abilities to rescue others. What about me? What do you need me to do? Cyclops asked hurriedly. Suk threw the rag on the ground over and said, Just cover your eyes and don't do anything, and that will be considered helping. Cyclops, the collapsed building crushed the structure here, making it impossible for the people above to come down. This gave Suk some time. According to his request, the other mutants were soon released. Not long after, more than 30 mutants stood in front of Suk, waiting for Suk to speak. Some of the mutants wanted to leave this place of trouble quickly, but when they thought of the power Suk had shown before, they could only temporarily suppress their thoughts. After all, they also saw that they were not Suk's opponents at all. Rather than humiliating themselves, it is better to wait and forget it. Anyway, their lives were saved by others. Staring at the group of mutants in front of him, Suk was also quite troubled, because among these mutants, except for Cyclops and a few others, most of them were not good people, and they definitely could not be taken to the mutant school. In the mutant school, Professor X and others promoted the spirit of peaceful coexistence between humans and mutants, but these guys were enslaved by humans before, and they already hated humans in their hearts. Taking these guys back would only bring hatred back. In this case, the only option is to let them go. This is what Professor X said before. He will never force any mutant to make a choice. Thinking of this, Su Kei said, I don't have much to say. Anyone who is willing to go to the mutant school with me, please stay. Those who don't want to go can leave now. But I hope you can live a good life after you leave. After all, you can't meet me every time. As soon as these words came out, the crowd began to stir. In the end, only two mutants chose to go to the mutant school with Suke, and with Cyclops, there were three. The others chose to leave. But just when those mutants who chose to leave were about to leave, for some reason, several of them suddenly attacked the others like crazy. What are you doing? We don't have to fight anymore. A mutant said angrily, holding the wound on his stomach. No, this is not me. I, I can't control my body anymore. The mutant who launched the attack said in horror. Me too, someone is controlling me, stay away from me. It must be the White Queen again, only she has this ability. Sorry, I can't control myself. Accompanied by waves of panicked voices, the entire venue suddenly became chaotic again. Su Kei's heart sank, he didn't expect that the White Queen would actually attack these mutants. Then, a heavy sound of footsteps suddenly came from the doorway of the burial not far away, shaking the entire earth. 
Then, Su Ke saw a huge figure crashing into the wall and appearing in front of everyone. The iconic helmet and physique immediately let everyone know his identity. Red Tank. Behind him, there was a tall white-haired beauty, who was the White Queen. How did we get these two guys here? Be careful, if you are caught by them you will be dead. These two guys are a disgrace to mutants. Facing the sudden appearance of Red Tank and White Queen, the other mutants immediately showed deep fear, but in the fear, there was an unspeakable disgust. What was supposed to come finally came. Unlike other mutants, when Su Ke saw Red Tank and White Queen, he was delighted, because he had always wanted to find a strong opponent to test his strength. Originally, his first choice was Hulk or Thor, but these two guys were too hard to find. As for Red Tank, although he was a little worse than Hulk, he was enough. Thinking of this, Su Ke had no hesitation at all, and flew up immediately, and then landed steadily in front of Red Tank and White Queen. With his appearance, White Queen was only surprised, because at the moment Su Ke fell, her telepathy was actually unusable, and she could no longer control those mutants. Such a thing was also expected by Su Ke. According to Professor X's explanation, the reason for this was that Su Ke's own mental power was too strong, and he would automatically form a mental barrier within a certain range to block the ability of telepathy. Of course, if Su Ke wanted to, he could also remove such a mental barrier. As soon as the White Queen's telepathy disappeared, the mutants who were previously controlled immediately felt as if they had been pardoned. They knelt on the ground and gasped heavily. Looking at their injured companions, they only felt a burst of self-blame in their hearts. Okay, let's leave here if you have anything to say. Leave this place to me. I am very interested in these two guys. Su Ke turned around and shouted to the mutants not far away. As soon as he said this, the mutants didn't even have time to say thank you. They supported each other and ran out. Even Scott was taken away. Faced with all this, Red Tank ignored Sook, but turned to look at the White Queen behind him and said, Emma, what's going on? Why did you let them leave? The White Queen shook her head first, then looked at Sook in front of her and said, he blocked my telepathy. Be careful, we don't know his specific abilities yet. Ha, huh. when Red Tank heard this, his huge head turned around and stared at Sook. As a super heavyweight mutant, Red Tank has always looked down on other mutants. Of course, he does have such strength. So he didn't listen carefully to what Sook said before, nor did he care at all. Even when looking at Sook now, there was only contempt in his eyes. In his opinion, as long as he wanted, he could kill the kid in front of him with just one finger. What? Being looked down upon. Sensing Red Tank's extremely contemptuous eyes echoing on him, Sook felt a burst of laughter in his heart. After all, this was his first real battle, so he thought he should be more serious. Red Tank, right, nice to see you here, but I'm sorry because I might kill you today. If I kill you by accident, please don't take it too seriously. Sook said with a smile on his face, pretending to be very cool. Ha 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 ha, when Red Tank heard this, he laughed as if he had heard a big joke, shaking the whole space. He had had many powerful opponents in his life, such as Wolverine, Colossus, and even Hulk. Although he did not win every battle with them, none of them dared to look down on him. He did not expect that this little guy in front of him would dare to look down on him like this, which made him feel very funny. Red Tank, don't be careless, this guy is not an ordinary mutant. Behind Red Tank, the White Queen reminded quietly. From the time Sook appeared until now, the White Queen has been trying to find a way to invade Sook's mind, but who would have thought that Sook's mind was so powerful that it was unbelievable, even more powerful than Professor X, who was known as the strongest brain. She tried every possible way, but still could not successfully invade. Instead, she was almost affected by Sook's mind. This seemed almost impossible to her, but such a thing actually happened in front of her eyes, which made her nervous. However, in the face of the White Queen's reminder, Red Tank said impatiently, Emma, what do you mean? Do you think this kid can really beat me? Then, without waiting for the White Queen to speak, Red Tank looked at Sook fiercely and said, Boy, I hate your attitude, so you'd better die. As he spoke, Red Tank immediately raised his huge fist and smashed it towards Sook, determined to smash Sook into a pulp with one punch. But, the next moment, the whole place suddenly became strangely quiet. The White Queen felt as if she was about to stop breathing. 
she saw that the place where the red tank had just stood was now empty, as if there was nothing there before. Boom! There was a loud noise. It was the sound of a heavy object smashing through the roof and flying straight into the sky. Boom! There was another loud noise. This was the sound of a heavy object falling to the ground. This huge object was nothing else but the red tank that had stood in front of Emma. As the red tanks went up and down, the buildings here finally couldn't hold on any longer. With a loud bang, the entire hotel finally collapsed completely, and the underground mutant fighting arena was completely buried. On the ground, watching the red tank go up and down, the gangsters waiting outside couldn't help but gasp. Almost everyone felt dizzy. Is this possible? Could someone throw the red tank into the sky like a ball? Impossible. What happened just now? Are you dazzled? This is not right. It's okay if only one person is dazzled, but how can everyone be dazzled at the same time? Everyone was nervous, not knowing what had just happened. Boom. Then, another explosion sounded, and the ruins of the entire building were suddenly blasted into the air. In the dust, a handsome young man slowly flew out holding a woman who had completely turned into diamonds. What's going on? Who is he? Looking at Su Ke flying out with the White Queen in his arms, the gangsters looked at each other in bewilderment. No one knew what was going on. But it didn't matter to them, because they had already seen that all this seemed to be the work of this man. Kill him. Then, no one knew who shouted first, the gangsters immediately pointed their pistols at Suk. Suk's eyes were stern, and the domineering aura in his body instantly spread out from him to the surroundings, like a volcanic eruption. The next second, the gangsters suddenly fell to the ground with their necks tilted, without any resistance. And the White Queen Emma, who was held in Suk's arms, was naturally affected by the domineering aura. Although Suk had deliberately avoided her, she was still affected mentally, and even the diamond form could not be maintained. She instantly transformed into a human form. Logically speaking, Suk should not have saved Emma. After all, through what Emma did to other mutants just now, it was enough to show that she was indeed not a good person. But then again, in the original universe of the X-Men, although Emma was a bad person at first, it seemed it's not that bad, right? Moreover, in the comics and movies, Emma has always been an arrogant person. She even fought against humans with Magneto. How could she be willing to work for an ordinary human gang? This is really a bit wrong. Just when Suk was confused, Emma was deeply shocked. As a mutant, she naturally knew mutants very well, but the various powers that Suk had shown before were too powerful and too incredible. These powers were not powers that mutants could possess at all. Although mutants will gain power after awakening, it is generally just a simple ability. Of course, there are also more than two. For example, she herself has both telepathy and diamond abilities. For example, Wolverine has super self-healing abilities and the ability to extend steel claws from the back of his hand. But what about the man in front of him? Possessing a strong mental power that is strong enough to resist any telepathy. Possessing the ability to fly. Possessing a super strength that can even knock Red Tank away with one punch. Possessing a super strong mental attack that even she can't describe. This is only the ability he has shown so far. As for what he hasn't shown, who knows how much more there is. Is this really an ability that mutants can have? Thinking of this, Emma murmured, no, it's not right. This is not right, your power, it's not a power that mutants can possess, so who are you? With a slight smile, Su Kei looked at Emma in his arms and said, obviously, I'm an alien. Although this was the truth, Su Kei said it with some sarcasm. However, when Emma heard this, her eyes became a little confused. After falling to the ground, Su Kei put Emma down in his arms, and then asked slowly, Tell me, what is going on? Why do you want to help human gangs hurt mutants? Why do you want to make trouble in New York City? Seeing that all her abilities were useless in front of Su Kei, Emma didn't plan to escape, because it was obvious that she couldn't escape at all. Shaking her head gently, Emma said, You won't understand even if I tell you. Most people won't believe this kind of thing. Tell me what you think. I am not just an ordinary person. Su Kei said with a smile. After a short silence, Emma finally spoke again. The reason why Red Tank and I did this was not because of our own will, but because. God's guidance. Ha! Huh. The moment he heard this, Su Kei thought he had heard it wrong, 
but when he saw Emma's serious face, he realized that he had not heard it wrong. You just said that God guided you to do these things, so who is this God? Su Ke became more interested and asked again. Emma was nervous at first, but finally said slowly. Quote, Evil God Loki. When Su Ke heard this, it was as if a thousand horses were galloping through his heart. Although he had expected that the White Queen might be forced to do these bad things, he never expected that the mastermind behind this matter would be Loki. Yes, he is Thor's younger brother, the famous god of mischief in the Marvel Universe. This script seems a bit wrong. Isn't the mutant god Apocalypse? When did he become Loki? This is getting more and more interesting. Boom. Then, just when Su Ke was about to ask carefully what was going on, there was another boom in the ruins not far away. Then, a huge head appeared. Who else could it be but Red Tank? After finally climbing up, Red Tank patted the dust off his body and looked at Su Ke with a fierce face. Red Tank's defense ability is definitely ranked among the best in the entire Marvel Universe, so Su Ke was not too surprised by such a result. To be more precise, he was very satisfied with Red Tank's performance. Because he originally planned to use Red Tank as a sandbag, it would be so boring if the sandbag was broken by a punch. Boy, you really pissed me off. I underestimated you just now, but now, I won't underestimate you anymore. Red Tank said, and quickly ran towards Sook. It was obvious that he was going to use his size and strength to give Sook a brutal collision. This move was also one of his special moves. When he used it, neither Thor nor the Hulk could stop him. But, what surprised Hong Tank was that Su Ke didn't seem to want to fight him this time. He was about to rush in front of him, but he remained indifferent. What, did he give up the resistance? Hong Tank thought with some surprise, but his steps did not stop at all. With every step he took, a huge deep pit would appear on the ground, and the ground around him would shake, like an earthquake. Just when Hong Tank was about to hit Su Ke, Hong Tank suddenly found that Su Ke's eyes seemed a little different. His eyes started to turn red, and it wasn't just any red. He looked like the kid they caught before whose eyes could release red shockwaves. Boom. In the next second, in front of Red Tank's unbelievable eyes, a red shockwave suddenly shot out from Sook's eyes and hit Red Tank directly. Red Tank was shocked. He didn't expect Sook to have such an ability. He had suffered a lot when capturing Cyclops before. Now he encountered this red shockwave again. He subconsciously wanted to dodge, but the distance was too close, and he was too big, so he couldn't dodge at all. Gritting his teeth. Red Tank could only cross his arms in front of him, ready to resist Sook's red shock wave attack. Sook had already roughly known his own strength in the previous simple strength test, so the strength test was no longer necessary. He wanted to try the ability to emit energy again. It happened that he had absorbed a lot of Cyclops' red shock waves before, so he used them directly now. The red shock wave hit Red Tank. Although it did not damage his body, the high temperature contained in it still made Red Tank grimaced. In less than a moment, his arm was burned red like metal. Just when he was about to give up, Su Ke finally stopped. Oh shit, Red Tank waved his arm that was burned by the red shock wave, and his eyes became bloodshot. You know, he has never been so miserable since he gained the ability. Sure enough, this guy's defense is really strong. Even Cyclops' red shockwave can't damage his skin. Su Ke stopped emitting shockwaves from his eyes, and thought with a look of enlightenment, ignoring Emma who was already extremely surprised. At this moment, Emma looked at Su Ke as if she was looking at a monster. That's right, Phoenix Force. The next second, Su Ke's mind suddenly lit up. How could he forget the Phoenix Force? Cyclops's red shockwave might not cause any damage to Red Tank, but Phoenix Force could definitely do it. Thinking of this, Su Ke had no hesitation at all. In an instant, his eyes became hot again, and even redder than before. Still coming, seeing this, Red Tank almost cursed. Then, another red energy shot out and hit him hard. The difference from before was that the power contained in this red energy was much stronger than before. The moment it touched him, it instantly destroyed his skin and then began to invade his body unscrupulously. The powerful impact caused by this even blew him away. At this moment, Red Tank finally understood that the boy in front of him was not someone he could fight against. In front of him, I am still too weak. A moment later, Sook sat lazily on a huge stone, 
while Red Tank and White Queen Emma stood quite obediently not far away, and had long lost their arrogance. Emma was not to be mentioned. After seeing Suk's power, she had completely lost the idea of resistance, because in her opinion, any resistance was futile. As for Red Tank, he was completely defeated. As a heavyweight mutant, Red Tank rarely surrendered to others. If you want him to surrender, you can only defeat him. Obviously, Soup did this. The place where he was injured before has gradually healed by itself, but it is conceivable that if it was a little later, he might not have had a chance to heal himself. This was Sook's mercy. Although Red Tank sometimes acted impulsively, he was not a fool. If he continued to attack in this situation, I am afraid that his life would really be explained here. Sook was quite satisfied with the performance of Red Tank and Emma, because he had some questions to ask next, and if they were willing to cooperate, he would save a lot of trouble. After tapping his head lightly with his fingertips, Suke asked, Tell me, how did you get to know Loki, and how did you think of him as a god? Knowing that he couldn't escape, Red Tank was more cooperative this time. He said, About a year ago, I was captured by S. H. I. E. L. D. and imprisoned in S. H. I. E. L. D. prison. Then Loki suddenly appeared. He claimed to be a god and asked me if I wanted to be free. I said yes, and then he said that there would be a price, and I had to do something for him. I didn't think much about it at the time, so I agreed to him directly, and then I kept following his instructions. I don't know why, but I couldn't disobey his orders. Quote, Su K was a little speechless, and he also realized that Red Tank should have been controlled by Loki. As one of the few magicians in the Marvel Universe, Loki was completely capable of doing such a thing, not to mention that Red Tank was a very easy-to-control guy. Although he wanted to ask Red Tank some more questions, he also knew that Red Tank was a muscular guy with a simple mind. He would not get any useful information if he asked more questions. He could only look at Emma again. How about you? How did you get to know Loki? It's similar to Red Tank. I was also captured and rescued by Loki. Since then, I have been working for him. He is my savior and a god. I will not go against his wishes. Emma said with her head down. It is obvious that Emma was also controlled by Loki. According to Sook's previous understanding, the timeline he is currently in should be before the Battle of New York. At this time, Captain America has just woken up from hibernation, Iron Man is still thinking about how to form the Avengers, Thor is still in love, and Hulk is still hiding somewhere. This means that Loki has begun preparing for the New York War. The plot of Avengers 1 is about to be staged in this world. As for the reason why Loki manipulated Red Tank and Emma, it was very simple in Sook's opinion. He just wanted to use them to sow discord between humans and mutants. This way, it would be much easier for him to invade the Earth. For a moment, Su K was speechless. He had just arrived on Earth and hadn't had a few days to relax yet, and this kind of thing happened again. But no matter what, all of this is Loki's fault. The White Queen and Red Tank are just pawns used by Loki to sow discord between humans and mutants. Thinking of this, Su K felt a little sympathetic towards Red Tank and Emma. System, do you have any way to restore Red Tank and Emma to normal? Sook wanted to help Red Tank and Emma get rid of Loki's control, but Loki was a very skilled magician, and although he himself was immune to magic, he didn't understand magic at all, so he could only ask the system for help. Ding. Scanning. Please wait. Ding. Scan successful. Loki is using advanced bewitching magic. The bewitched person will unconditionally obey all the orders of the caster and cannot disobey. It takes 1000 points to remove the magic. Are you sure? Are you sure? Sook said in his heart without any hesitation. He could still afford this amount of points. The next second, Sook felt that there were two more things in his hand. He looked down and found that they were two small bottles of magic water. It turns out that you have to take it orally to remove the magic. Sook was completely convinced. Here, these are two bottles of magic water, which can help you remove Loki's magic, and then you will be free again. Sook K said, handing over the two bottles of magic water. Without any hesitation, Red Tank directly threw the magic water and the bottle into his mouth, chewed it for a while and swallowed it. Emma hesitated at first, but finally drank the magic water. Loki used advanced magic, 
and the magic cube was different from telepathy, so Red Tank and Emma had never noticed it, and just thought that they were really helping Loki out of gratitude. But as the magic water took effect, Red Tank was so angry that he couldn't hide it. Loki, how dare you control me? I am a Red Tank. Red Tank kept yelling and cursing while walking back and forth, shaking the entire earth. It was obvious that he was really angry at the moment. Emma was terrified. When she was controlled by Loki before, she didn't feel the slightest bit of guilt for what she had done. But now that she was awake, she realized how hateful she was before. As a mutant, she actually helped humans to kill her own kind. Although that was something I did after being controlled, it was still something I did after all. Seeing this, Su K could only comfort them, don't blame yourself too much, you were just controlled, it's not your fault, if you want to blame someone, you can only blame Loki. Ding, notice the change in the main world timeline, and now start to release the Marvel World Mainline Mission 1, find the space gem and help Loki invade the Earth and help Iron Man form the Avengers. Search for space gems, mission reward, 500,000 points and a chance to win a prize. Help Loki invade the Earth. Mission reward, 800,000 points and a chance to win a prize. Assist Iron Man in establishing the Avengers and be rewarded with 1 million points and 2 chances to draw a lottery. Suddenly, at this moment, the system's voice sounded again. Su K was completely shocked. Although he had guessed that the system would definitely ask him to find the Infinity Stones, he never expected that the system would ask him to help Loki invade the Earth. He could understand everything else, but helping Loki invade the Earth was nonsense. Shocked, Su K quickly asked in his mind, Hey, system, did you send the wrong task? What kind of task is helping Loki invade the Earth? Ding, the system will not make mistakes. Please help Loki invade the Earth. The system said directly. Su K was speechless again. But the next second, Su K suddenly looked annoyed again, because he suddenly thought, isn't this system called the super god villain system? Just because the system didn't issue villain missions before, he didn't care about this kind of thing. If you think about it this way, this mission doesn't seem to be wrong. After all, he is a super villain. Hey, sighing in his heart again, Su K looked at Red Tank not far away and said, hey, where are you going next? Red Tank clenched his fists until veins popped, and said viciously, I'm not going anywhere until I kill Loki. Very good, I just happen to be going to find Loki too, if you want, just follow me. Su K said, the system's task is only to help Loki invade the earth, but it does not say to help Loki occupy the earth. This means that as long as Loki invades the earth, Su K's task will be completed. After that, no matter what he does, the system will not care about him. No problem, boss. Red Tank agreed to Sook's proposal without any hesitation, and he even called Sook, boss. On the one hand, he really hated Loki and wanted to tear Loki into pieces. On the other hand, Sook had helped him get rid of Loki's control before, and coupled with Sook's previous power suppression, he couldn't help but have some obedience to Sook. Sook just felt a little funny about Red Tank's calling him, boss, and then she looked at Emma again. Emma, what about you? Emma raised her head her expression even more helpless. I don't know where to go or what to do. I've done so many bad things. There's no place for me in this world anymore. No one needs me. In the X-Men, Emma has always been a strong and confident woman. In front of everyone, she is always a powerful woman. She has never shown her weak side to anyone. But today, she showed her most unknown feelings. At this time, Emma is only 18 to 19 years old, about the same size as Su Kei. Apart from her mutant identity, she is just a little girl. But at this moment, she was suddenly picked up by someone. Looking closely, who else could it be but Su K? Who says there is no place for you in this world? Who says no one needs you? As long as you are willing, just follow me. Su K smiled. At this moment, Emma's heart suddenly trembled. She felt that she seemed to have finally found a support in her life. In the original story of X-Men, Emma is not a good person and her lifestyle is quite problematic, but these things happened after she was 20 years old. At that time, she was constantly exploited and deceived, which led to earth-shaking changes in her personality and life. But now, Emma is just an ordinary girl, and it is obvious that Su K will change her original destiny. 
Boss, what are we going to do next? Hong Tank walked up to Suk and asked. Just as Suk was about to speak, his expression changed slightly, and then he smiled and said, Wait a minute, a guest has arrived. Guest, Hong Tank was curious and didn't understand what Suk meant by this. But before he could speak, a huge beam of light suddenly lit up in the sky not far away, and it was aimed directly at them. At the same time, a warning sounded. This is Shield. You have been surrounded by us. Please put down your weapons and surrender to avoid unnecessary harm. Then, a huge aircraft carrier suddenly appeared in the night sky. It was Shield's aerospace carrier, and around the aerospace carrier, there were dozens of fighter jets. In the bushes not far away, hundreds of Shield agents were fully armed and slowly approaching. Faced with such a scene, Red Tank was not worried at all, but became very excited. He clenched his fists and hit them hard, and said excitedly, Shield is not a friend, I will crush them. As a supervillain, Red Tank has always been the target that Shield wants to capture. Of course, they have caught him before, but he escaped in the end. It is also because of such grudges that Red Tank has no regard for Shield, and he will do whatever he wants. First, he put Emma down in his arms, and then Su Kei waved his hand to Red Tank and said, Don't do it yet. If we want to find Loki, we have to go to S.H.I.E.L.D. first, but of course, not as criminals, but as guests. No way. Red Tank shook his head and said, S.H.I.E.L.D. will only lock us up and won't treat us as guests. Don't worry, I have my own way. Just don't do anything yet. If they really dare to arrest people, I will blow up that aerospace mothership first. Sook pointed to the huge aerospace mothership in the sky. Seeing Sook say this, Red Tank put away his fist, but his eyes were still full of hostility. It was obvious that he did not trust S.H.I.E.L.D. In the Marvel world, anything related to S.H.I.E.L.D. is generally not a good thing. At the beginning, Soup did not want to deal with S.H.I.E.L.D., but just now, he suddenly thought of something. That is, the Space Stone among the Infinity Stones should be in S.H.I.E.L.D. now. At that time, the Space Stone, also known as the Cosmic Cube, was accidentally obtained by the Red Skull, the leader of Hydra. After a fierce battle, Captain America defeated the Red Skull, but he was frozen in the Arctic along with the Space Stone. Afterwards, S.H.I.E.L.D. rescued Captain America and also got the Space Stone. And Loki's purpose of going to S.H.I.E.L.D. before was to find the Space Stone. If Loki wants to invade the Earth, he must use the Space Stone to open a passage so that he can teleport his alien army over. If you want to find Loki, you must find the Space Stone first. As for what to do after finding the Space Stone, Su Ke already had a plan in his mind. Such an important thing is more suitable for him to keep personally. Looking up at the aerospace carrier in the sky, Su Ke suddenly had a sentence in his mind. Where can I find the Infinity Stones? I still have to go to Shield. Smiling and shaking his head, Su Ke looked at Emma beside him and said, Emma, please notify Nick Fury the director of S.H.I.E.L.D., and tell him that I have something to talk to him about. Emma nodded hurriedly after hearing this, and then began to use telepathy. At the same time, in the aerospace carrier, Nick Fury, the director of S.H.I.E.L.D., was standing in the cockpit with a frown on his face, watching all this. To be honest, today's situation was really too weird. The hot-tempered red tank, who would start fighting at the slightest disagreement, had not made a move until now. Instead, he stood there quietly. If it weren't for other people seeing it, Nick Fury would definitely think that there was something wrong with his other eye. This should have been a good thing, but Nick Fury couldn't be happy at all, because this matter was really too weird. Then, in the next second, a female voice suddenly rang in his mind. Mr. Director, we have something to talk to you about. Telepathy. Nick Fury's heart sank at first, then he stared at Red Tank, and then he ordered, Get ready, I want to go down and talk to them. I hope everyone will support it and subscribe more.